Good morning, my friends. It's National Master Michael Rahal here with you for the fourth round of the Chess Menorca International here in Spain, in the <clears throat> Balearic Islands, in Menorca, the smaller of the two Balear Islands. We have Mallorca, Menorca, Ibiza, and Formentera. And I'm in Menorca in the venue of the chess tournament where more than 500 players are in action this morning in the first of the two double rounds for the top prize of the event. And uh, I'll be here with you this morning during the fourth round and then again this afternoon with the fifth round. I'm going to do something with this scene. Something is slightly wrong with this scene. I'll take this one off and leave the one behind. That's it. And let's just also adjust this here. There we go. And as every day, I'll be joined at different moments by. Grandmaster Miguel Yescas, who will come along to say hello. And of course, leave, leave your messages, your comments, your suggestions in the chat box. Good morning, Rajan. Good to see you as well. Hopefully, I've activated the DVR, which should suggest that now you can go back and forth on the video, which is something you asked for, requested yesterday. Hopefully, that's done now. I'm going to go in the middle, and if someone comes, then I move to the right. So, this is the first board between Grandmasters Sebastian Yermito and Kirill Alexenka. Both of them have three out of three, and we'll be following this game very closely today. But before we start, we can always check. You can check with the chess results here. There we go. And this is the the pairings after three rounds. So already we can see at the top of the pairings chart there are only eight players with three points out of three. Uh, the aforementioned Sebastian Yermito against Kirill Alexenka. Second board, we have Marcin Krasinowski, Grandmaster, with white against Daniel Darda from Belgium. Tough games, both of these games are very tough pairings. And then we have one of the surprise players, Edgar Mamedov, I think he's only 15 years old. And he's only a feeder master, but already playing at the level of a strong IM. He's facing Aido Gorstein with white in the third board. And in fourth place, we have Nicolas Lub, grandmaster from Germany, facing Jan Klimowski, which I think is from Poland. Then in the fourth in the fourth board. Then underneath, many players with two and a half. Among them, you can see Eddie Geisy, Nikhal Sarin, Jordan Van Forest. <coughs> All of them very strong players. Arabin Chitambaran, then Alain Pichot, Lagarde, Warmadarm, Murzin, a bunch of a very, very strong International Grandmasters, Chigaev, Kartikvind Kataram, Jufa, Albornoz, Seaman, Pranav. I mean, they're just all there. I mean, this tremendously strong. Even at the lower, at the lower ranks of two and a half, you can find Grandmasters like such as Alvar Alonso or Tomas Sosa, 
who are playing slightly weaker opponents, but very strong in themselves. For example, Dimitris Alexakis. He just finished with seven and a half in Alicante. And he was the guy who held Eddie Gaisi to a draw in the first round and was actually winning at several moments. So Alvar has a very tough opponent today. Adiban also with two and a half. But here you don't find many other surprises. And then we then the group of two. In between the group of two and a half and two, there are three boards. The board of Kremlin, Prado, and Z Zachary Sain. And you'll notice that these three boards, the players are clearly much weaker than the Grandmaster surrounding them. And that is because these are the three boards we call the streamers boards. These are players who have a special privilege. They're allowed to stream their own games for their own audiences. Um, so they have to use electronic boards and the mm. the idea behind this initiative is to get more eyeballs on the tournament from the audiences of these streamers. That's the reason their boards are in the middle of the title player boards. For example, Anna Kramlin, she only has one point out of three, but she'll be playing alongside the rest of the Grandmasters. With two points, we have some other very strong players. By the way, Laya Kurmangalieva from Kazakhstan on two and a half as well. Probably the highest surprise in the tournament for the moment. But look, she's playing against Fedosev today. It's a very, very difficult pairing. Very difficult pairing. Many other grandmasters with, with the amount of points of two. I mean, two out of three, look at, look at the strengths of some of these players. It's unbelievably strong. But even if we go down to the group of one and a half, we'll still find very, very strong players with one and a half, like Shuvalova or Baskin. All these are international masters, very strong international masters. And even with one point, there are some IMs and women grandmasters like Hyman or Panda, Priyanka. Very good players, very good players indeed, very good players. And they're on one point. I think that could easily give us a clear idea of the toughness of this event. I don't think we'll find many IMs and Grandmasters with half a point, but let's check. No, with half a point, there are strong players like Xavi Alfonso, who I know personally, or Andy Essen but not international masters or grandmasters. And with zero points, yeah, with zero points, basically most of them are uh, basically chess fans and uh, young kids who are starting off. Uh, and then of course we also have uh, a, a B group. And um, the B group basically is filled with uh, young kids and older people who prefer to play in a more calm, in a relaxed environment and not with all the grandmasters and top top professionals. The B group is played in a different hotel. Uh, Nieman didn't come the first round, so he's out. Edugmos didn't come the first round, he's out. But I'm surprised to see that Poya Idani hasn't been paired. And I'm actually going to ask... I'm going to try and find out the reason why... Idani Poya, although he has three out of three, hasn't been paired today. Maybe he's ill. I'm going to try and find out.
Okay, so I've asked that question and hopefully we'll get an answer soon and we can find out why and for what reason Poya didn't, didn't get paired to today. Okay, so let's check some of the games. Ah, hold on, there's something wrong with the board. Let me adjust this. There we go. There's the full board there. Fantastic. So, in the first board, we have Sebastian Yermito facing Alexenka. Let's jump to the second board and just see who we have playing. Here we have on the second board <clears throat> Kisinski against Dada. Just checking the names and the position just to see if there's anything very, very special. And then we'll analyze the openings in a bit more detail. Mamedov against Faustino. No, Mamedov against Gorstein. Normal position as well. Fourth board, Lub against Klimowski, also a very standard position. Fifth board, Erigaisi with two and a half against Vogel with three. No, also with two and a half, very standard. Guillaume Lamode against Nihal Sarin on board six, a standard Catalan. Board 7 we have Jose Fernando Cuenca, Pepe Cuenca against Van Forest. This one looks to be interesting as well. Yep, Aramin Petkov on board 7, board 8. Board 9, Pichot against Baras Kridan. This one will look at it carefully because this seems to be a very interesting two nights variation. Of the Sicilian, and then we have Jaradi Sidart on board 10. Again, all very standard positions, all players with two and a half. War Madame against Kazibek, Tong Chao from China against Volodar Murzin, Chopra Gizel, Chigaev Macias. Castellanos Venkataram, Yufa Coel, and the rest of the players. Also, we have um, Faustino, who's a young 10 year old kid, a wonder kid. He's also playing on one of the feature boards. Let me check. I think he generally plays on board 42. No. They've put him on board 40, but this one doesn't have broadcast today. Well, that's a pity. Okay. So we don't have uh, the special broadcast board for the Faustino game. We do have the streamers on board 25, 26 and 27. This is Zane, Zach Zane. I think he's called the Chess Nerd on, on YouTube. He's streaming his games. And uh, Prado is also streaming her games. And Kremlin is also streaming her own games. All of these players are streaming their games, although they're not international grandmasters or international masters. And closing the boards of broadcast, we have Baskaran Adiban. Real chess fighter, Baskaran, the beast, I think they call him in India. He's playing on board at 24 and closing the players with two and a half out of three. So, we basically set the scene for today's morning round. Today's a double round, so it wouldn't surprise me to see a few early draws in the boards where the 
stronger player is playing with black and the slightly weaker player is playing with white on those boards it's quite typical to see some quick draws be, uh, among the higher rated um, players on the top boards because this afternoon there's another game and the higher player rated rated higher rated player playing with black won't mind getting a draw in the morning round so he can go and get some rest and play for a win with white in the double round of the afternoon whereas tomorrow tomorrow friday the sixth round is in the afternoon there's no morning round tomorrow so if any of you guys are thinking of following the broadcast tomorrow friday don't come in the morning because you won't find us here we will be playing the sixth round in the afternoon on saturday there's a double round and sunday the last round is in the in the morning however i'm suspecting that many of you will be also focusing these days on the candidates which i think starts today uh, at 8 at 2 30 in canada which will be about eight o'clock or eight thirty here in in spain i'm not sure how it will be looking in other parts of the world but that would be obviously the the main focus of the of the um, of the chess <clears throat> during the month of april and actually i will be covering the candidates for the icc chess platform with videos every three or four rounds recap videos starting on monday on the first rest day so check, check those out also on the icc channel in youtube okay let's see if i got an answer for the polia situation not yet Okay, I'll be checking my text messages just in case I get in any information. But let's start with the, with the games. And our first game is this uh, player. First round game between Yermito and Alexenka. They've played a uh, sort of King's Indian attack but uh, starting from a different move order and Alexeyinka playing with black as I said playing very solidly today and the move started with d5 g3 now this b6 so early this is a bit of a surprise normally black doesn't play b6 and bishop b7 so fast but I don't think it's a bad move just slightly surprising normally black goes for knight f6 and bringing the bishop out to f5. c4, immediately claiming the long diagonal if black captures the pawn, which he does. Knight to a3, knight c4, bishop g2, e6, bishop e7, d4, and knight to e5. A normal position uh, white is very very slightly better but i'm i'm seeing that it's very easy for black to start exchanging off pieces and equalizing quite simply 
Now, one thing I've noticed these days is the tendency of stronger players with black unbalancing the game already on move, move two, three, four, five. And what I'm trying to say is that they're choosing uh, certain moves with black that are secondary moves, but not necessarily bad moves. Like, for example, b6. Now, clearly, b6 is a secondary move. No, no one plays b6. This must be the eighth or ninth possibility in the openings explorer. However, it's not a bad move. And the idea is to sidestep the theory as soon as possible. Get their opponent out of the book. And I'm seeing this constantly from, from better players. Because they want to try and face their opponent on their own terms not against the opponent's book or even the opponent's coach's analysis. So pay, we have to pay attention to this when we see the openings. A lot of players will be sidestepping theory. Okay, so as I, as I suggested, Black has started swapping off pieces. More swaps. Obviously, White will play King takes G2. Although there is a check on A4, there is an intermediate check on A4, so that's why Yermito has stopped for a moment to think, because King takes G2 would be the automatic recapture. And you might be thinking, why is he taking so much time to capture the bishop? There is a Queen A4 check intermediate. So, hi to Domoraju, who's uh, saying hello from Buenos Aires. Today there are two rounds, the morning round and the afternoon round. And of course with a bone cloud you take your opponent out of the book, but it is slightly risky. The bone cloud, as you all know, is to play pawn to e4 and then king to e2, which is a funny way of developing the king. Funny and very risky. So I do suspect that the move would be king takes g2, and actually queen a4 would be a mistake. Sorry, I'm moving this. Queen A4 would actually be a mistake, which I'm sure <clears throat> Sebastian will, will, will fix very quickly, because black would play B5, very strong move, queen takes B5, and now C6. And the thing is, when capture the pawn, we recapture with the bishop, and then get our king out of the way, or even block with the knight and black would have an extra piece. So it's good for Sebastian to take a moment to think about queen a4, but he has to make sure that he doesn't play it because it would be a big blunder. But of course, Sebastian Yermito is a very strong 2500 gram master. I actually played with him here two years ago in this same tournament. This year I'm, I'm coming as a commentarist but two years ago I actually played the event, a tough event, but I had a good time and one of my opponents was Sebastián Yermito. I was able to draw him. Then he wasn't a grandmaster yet, but he already had 2500 in rating. So he's obviously a very strong player. Well, he recaptured and black quickly castled. And basically what black will try and do here is prepare the move c5 oops and when you get c5 in the game will be very close to equal if white plays knight to c6 here black can play queen d5 check and again this would be a huge blunder so yermito has to become a player a solid player without any reckless play So, approximately equal, and yes, Domaraju, the bone clown would be clearly a reckless choice for white. It would be a bad, bad, bad opening, and something that we won't be seeing at a high-level uh, international tournament event. You can see this on social media, maybe some blitz games, maybe some bullet games, but you won't be seeing this on, uh, on top-level games. For sure. 
Okay, so the first board, very equal, and Sebastian Yermito playing very, very solidly onto the vest, taking no risks and just trying to put a very slight amount of pressure on his opponent. This is one of the games where I wouldn't be surprised at all if the players assigned a draw after 15 or 20 moves. Let's go to the second game. Of course, today the main the main story of chess. Although I'm very happy to be in Menorca, but uh, we do all know that the main story of chess is the candidates. Okay, we'll talk about that in a moment. But first, Enzo, and for everyone else on the chat. <clears throat> although I normally do my videos in Spanish on this channel uh, today. And this week I'm doing the broadcast in English for the for the Chess Menorca tournament. If you want to see the Spanish broadcast, you can go to the El Divis TV channel in Google, where David is doing the broadcast in Spanish. So you can always go and see over there the channel. I hope to have Faustino here at some point during the tournament. I talked to him yesterday very briefly. And every day... I have been interviewing players. If you look at the the video of round one, you'll see the video we, the interview with Eric Eisi. And if you look at the video of round two, you'll see a fantastic game analyzed by Jordan Van Forest. So yes, I have been interviewing these players. And when the tournament finishes, when I get back home, I'll crop those uh, moments and put them as special videos on the channel. So because they normally get lost in the broadcast. And I don't have time here to be able to cut them and put them uh, apart. But what I'll try and do is get those videos and put them in the channel as separate independent videos when the tournament finishes. Okay, this is the second board where we have Marcin Kuczynski and Daniel Darla. But before we go into analysis of this game, tell me... What do you think will happen in the candidates? Who do you think will win the candidates? Give me your give me your chances here on the chat. Who do you think will win the candidates? Is it going to be Fabiano Caruana? Will it be Hikaru Nakamura? Maybe one of the Indian players? What are your, what are your thoughts on the candidates? Okay, so I've been, tell, I've been told that Idani Poya asked for a buy this morning. So he wanted to do, get an extra rest. Uh, well, I'm not sure if the buys get half a point or not. If they get half a point, well, it's not so bad to ask for a, for a buy. <clears throat> Whom would you be most surprised as the winner? That's a very good question. Because I think that the winner will be Caruana or Nakamura. My, my, my bet is on Caruana or maybe Nopomnishi. And I'd be very surprised if a guy called like Pragnananda or Gukesh wins it. I very doubt that Avasov will win it, not only because he's the, on the paper, the weakest player in the field, but also because I saw some photos yesterday of him in Canada where he had a, an accident on his leg. He was in crutches. So clearly he's had some, some sports accident recently, very recently. His leg was in bandages, he was on crutches. So that's some other di difficulty he has to deal with. 
However, the good thing for him is that you can't stand up and go and walk around if you're in crutches. So at least his concentration will be really top top level. He can't you can't lose concentration by walking around if you're unable to walk. You get to the board, you sit down, and you just stay there for the rest of the game. But of course, dealing with that at a high level must be very painful. Uh, you have to take certain um, certain medicines, certain painkillers, and that can affect your performance. So I'd be very surprised if uh, Avasov is able to pull off uh, a good performance. Uh, most likely, my my bets are with Fabiano Caruana and with uh, Nepomnici, who's won the candidates two times in a row. So obviously it's a tournament which uh, plays well for him. Well, that is true, Domaraju. Physical problems did work fine for Niemann recently. Obviously, Domaraju is uh, referencing the ear, the ear problems that uh, Niemann had in, in Grenk. Uh, of course, it's slightly different. Um, what I don't understand is, at some point, he says he was going to leave the tournament because of the excruciating pain. And then he wins with eight out of nine. So obviously, either the pain wasn't so excruciating as he says, or he's able to perform under uh, unbelievably difficult circumstances, which seems a bit strange to me, no? I think he had something which in Spanish we say is called otitis, which is just a, a mild infection of the ear. It can be painful, but nothing you can't calm down with some painkillers. But it's not something that should uh, stop you from performing at a more or less okay level. Uh, New Lesson says he has had an ACL tear. That is very serious. Very, very serious. No? A, a, a ACL tear, a tear, that's basically <clears throat> a six-month injury for your knee. That's very, very serious. Um, actually, it's so serious that one could have thought he might have decided to step down. Uh, pun intended, to step down. Um... Uh, tremendously serious. Okay, so clearly we have um, the option of uh, Nakamura, maybe Caruana, maybe Nepomnishi. These are the players who might be uh, on, on on line for the for the victory of the of the candidates. <clears throat> Let's check the second game between Krzyzewski and Dana. E4. C5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5. Now this move initiates the so-called Rosolimo attack. And the main idea of the Rosolimo attack is to swap off the knight at some point and create a structure with double pawns, which we will either try to attack or pressure further on. e6 pretends knight ge7 to protect the, the knights. The main alternative here is g6. This is a move which is played a lot, followed by bishop to g7. So, before black plays knight to g7, white decides to swap off the knight. Black captures towards the center that will allow him later on to play d5 in better circumstances. <clears throat> d3, knight e7, relocating the knight to g6, knight bd2, queen c7, queen e2, e5. This is interesting. Black's plan might be to play d6, and then strike with f5, opening up the play for the two bishops. Knight c4, hitting the pawn. Knight g6, protecting. h4. Now, this move is, is aggressive. The threat is h5. The knight would have to move. And then we would capture the pawn on e5. That's the threat. How can black stop that threat? Well, he can... Stop it directly with h5. 
how this would create a weakness on the g5 square. Or he can just protect the pawn. And when h5 comes, go back. But this position would be slightly better for white because of his space advantage on the king side. And as the game of chess is a game of space, to be able to cramp your opponents is very good. The computer suggests that this would be already nearly one point of space advantage for white. So Darda is taking on his first major thing. And Marcin Krasinski clearly is in theory still. He's only spent five minutes. And Darda is really thinking carefully what to do in this position. So I think it would be quite interesting to see how Darda gets out of this opening stage. Okay, I think we can move on and fall back to this game in a while. Here again we have the pairings and the standings can also be seen here. Of course, the standings are relative because the tie breaks are still not significant. They're more or less irrelevant at this moment. But it's interesting to see that the top player, Poya Idani, is precisely the player who took a bye this morning. Um, let's see if let's see if the um, let's see if we can find find out. if the buys give you a, a half a point or not. This is the web, web page of the Menorca Chess Tournament. Let's go to the English version. There we go. Live broadcast. Here we are. Rules and regulations. Okay, so let's see if players can take a half a point buy or if a buy means a zero. Here we are. Buys will be created with half a point. They be requested before the end of the previous round and you can take up to two buys except the last two rounds that's interesting that's interesting and it's a novelty for these type of tournaments so basically what, what they're saying is if you want to have a game off and not play you can decide to have a rest and the tournament will give you half a point this is interesting because if it's a double round <laughs> If you have a double round and you take a buy, you still get a half a point, but you don't have to play the game. Miguel. Hi. Good morning. How are you doing? Good Miguel? morning, everyone. So, yes. Miguel, I was, I was checking the games with yeah. the players. We're also talking about the candidates, of course. Yeah, sure. starts today. Uh -huh. I'll ask your opinion now about the candidates. But something surprised us, is, and the, the, the surprising situation is that the leader of the tournament, mm -hmm. who is Idani Poya. Yeah. He took a buy this morning. Yeah, yeah. I, I was a bit surprised. Yeah, so I went to the rules and regulations to see if the buy was a half point buy or a zero buy. Uh -huh. And you can get a half point buy. Oh, so as I was explaining to the, to the followers that if you have a half point buy on a very tough morning game, that's not such a bad yeah. deal, no? Do you think it's a good deal? It could be a good deal or not? Of course, yes. I mean, uh, especially, okay, there are some players here who they, they are looking for uh, norms, yes. grandmaster norms, or international master norms, then yeah. you need nine games. You need to play the games. But if you're a grandmaster, and, uh, well, I mean, and you're leading the tournament with three out three. You have to play tomorrow morning two games. Especially, uh, was he supposed to play with black or white? Can you can you tell me? Because that's also important. That's you know? important because he he is <coughs> four or five, no? Yeah, yeah. I, I can tell you now. So if we <laughs> we could click on his name, <coughs> yeah. it will appear here as well. Uh huh. And we can see his color distribution. So he played. Uh, he played. 
white, black, <laughs> white, and so, <laughs> theoretically this morning he would have yeah. black. In the afternoon he would have black anyway, you know. Yeah, this. but then okay. but then it's four color, four four, not five four black. Yeah, huh? so it was a very clever move uh, from Idani Poya. Huh? I I think this should not be allowed somehow. I mean, it should be allowed to get a buy, but then you get zero points because uh, this half point, as you said, it's uh, some kind of uh, unfair. Hmm. Uh, I w you were going to play a double, very tough double round uh, with three out of three. It's clear you're going to have a very strong opponent with the black pieces hmm. in the morning. And then you are very relaxed, <coughs> you get your half point. And then in the, you have all the time in the world to rest and play well in the afternoon. This, uh, this I will talk with the organizers because they should somehow... Uh, well, some, some of the tournaments have this rule. This is a rule thought of for the, for the fans. Yeah. Someone who's working in the morning, or imagine Miguel, mm -hmm. someone who wants to play the Menorca tournament, mm -hmm. but uh, one of the games he has a wedding, yeah. or he has uh, some personal problem. They allow him to take a buy, and they give him half a point so that he's okay. Yeah. But not for the professionals. Yeah, I think on the top. If you're, pro if you're professional and you have conditions for the tournament. Mm -hmm. I think play. on the top 20 war, something like that should not be allowed. Or, oh, or by you courts. Could, or you could get zero points and that's it. I mean, that's But that's always possible. You can always yeah. take, take a, a free day and yeah. lose the game. Yeah. But the thing is, they get half a point. Well, I mean, you... Yeah, but then you are not paid. I mean, uh, in this way, you are not paid. You You're just play paid, a tournament yes. of eight games. Yes. It's not the same like to forfeit and get a zero. Yeah. Anyway, okay, this is already... I mean, that already happened, so we can... It's in the rules. It. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, someone asked why he wasn't playing when he was the leader. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now we have the reason. So okay. I have some little stories this morning. Oh, if oh. you want, uh, I tell us. Tell us. Yeah. I want to ask you about the candidates, uh, but you can talk about that later on. Tell us. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, no. This morning I I went a bit late to the <coughs> to breakfast. Uh, they they set up breakfast till nine forty five. Yes. And we have the game at ten. Yes. And then uh, yesterday a lot of players came late. And of course, the waiters and the staff was not so happy about it. Oh, of course. And then today they made a trick. You, you know, uh, they closed the door. So oh. at 9.45, you could not enter anymore. Wow. Yeah, it's electric. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Electric door. But then, of course, we were playing this uh, trick, uh, cat and miss, cat and mouse, you know, waiting for somebody <laughs> getting out. Oh. And there were a lot of players trying to get in, you know. And then I, in the last moment, I met Pepe Cuenca, and Spanish Grandmaster. He came, but it was already very late, 10. Ah. Then I told him, okay, you should not wait because nobody's getting out. No one's getting out. It's yeah. quite, quite empty. So I gave him an apple, which I <laughs> took yesterday. And I had, to, I had it for me because I also didn't eat anything. But I thought, okay, come on, poor guy. He, he has to play. I think he needs this apple more than me, you know. Yeah. So, I so, him. so they come down just before the round yeah. to have a quick coffee and go to play. Now. It's very difficult. But yeah. not, they're, they're, they're not in time, of course. Yeah, yeah. I think, okay, I mean, for 15 minutes, uh, the hotel should be a bit more Maybe, yeah. kind in this Maybe. way. Because to it's very modify the... Yeah, yeah. Yesterday, Eric Aisi also, they came very, very late, you know, just five minutes before the round uh, with some other Indian player just to have some little snack. Uh, and yesterday they were allowed, but today they were very strict with this rule. Yeah, you know? yeah. And another little uh, funny story is about Faustino Oro, you know, this young player, yeah. 10 years old, he's playing today with White uh, on board, something like board 30, he's not on the broadcast uh, area. And you know, uh, all the top boards, 20 top boards, they play in some special area which is closed. Yeah. Um, uh, but it's very funny because Faustino, he plays and then he goes, uh, sneaks out <laughs> under the <laughs> protection and he enters to the main area. Yeah. And uh, I think he belongs there, you know, he he oh. feels very, very, very much like he should be. He goes into the... Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. And okay, the arbiters, they, they well, don't uh, tell him anything. Uh, you know? yeah. Yeah, they, yeah. They can go around on the sides, but mm -hmm. he should be inside there. Yeah, but yeah. he just sneaks there, I don't know. He's so <laughs> small. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. what is more, I mean, for me, it's more funny that he feels so much at home, you know, on the top boards with the top guys, you know. So I think very soon we will. We will I remember it, you yeah. told him yesterday you were discussing the game with him and, and you said, OK, uh, you were only able to draw, but you learned a lot in, in today's game. 
he's a kid. Yeah. He what he'd be learning, and he said, yeah, 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 yeah. I learned how to capture pawns. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was yes, thinking, yes. no respect for the elders, Miguel. No, no respect. No, no respect anymore. The no, no. Like, he's very kind. I mean, no, I'm. He's funny. He's funny. Yeah, I'm yeah. having. Yeah, every. Uh, it's funny because on the first two days I was looking for him after the game just to to check it with him. And yesterday, after game three, he it, it was him he, who came to me. He came to you. Uh, he asked me, okay, do you want to check the game together? And uh, it's quite interesting. Really? I think, That's uh, nice. Yeah, yeah, I think he's, uh, well, I mean, uh, he's m doing a, a typical mistake when he's uh, already winning or he has a much better position, then he gets a bit relaxed, you know, and uh, he's uh, missing uh, the next move of the opponent. Hmm. And this is uh, not a problem of calculation. It's a problem of concentration. I mean, experience, cannot, experience. As well. Yeah, you yeah. cannot miss the, the the opponent's move. I mean, this is a rule. And in fact, in one of the games, he he missed a, <coughs> ball, a, a full pawn. And he, yesterday's game, he blundered a piece. So I mean, it was quite serious. Uh, I told him, you know, next he time you can. Yesterday, wow. Yeah, yeah. Some uh, it, it was a discovered check, knight b6 check, knight takes e8. Oh, right? I saw that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, it's a full piece, you know. A very complicated position, but it's still a full piece, yeah. Yeah, but okay, the opponent has the queen on b3. You had the king on g8. I remember. It's like, yeah, uh, yeah. He played b5. Yes, provoking knight. Uh, okay, yeah, provoking that, 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 check, that was yeah. that was uh, very strange. Very yeah, strange. I think he lost a sense of danger. But I was, uh, I will talk to him later today. I will propose him a game, you know, which is quite useful, especially, I mean, not for Blitz, but for Classical. It's, uh, you should try every time to play a game during a game. It's a game in the game. Which a game is in the game. Try to, try to guess the opponent's move. Hmm. And then, okay, after the game, you, uh, you see how many times you guess correctly what was your opponent going to do. But the, the purpose of that game, it's not only to improve your empathy, to, to improve course. your ability, to know what what is your opponent going to do, but also to avoid basic mistakes, which mm. are the worst. Because, okay, I mean, if you miss the opponent's answer, it can be a tragedy. It can and, be a tragedy. Yeah, and yeah. this is what happened to him. So I will ask him to play. Kids love game. games. Yeah, okay, this something, is the way. It's something you can do with a small yeah. kid and he might even enjoy it. Yeah. Okay, before we look at the games, tell me about your candidates quickly. They start today. Did you know well, Alasov well, is injured? I know I didn't. Yeah, I saw some photos this morning. And he's he has crutches yeah. and his leg is bandaged. He's going to play anyway. I, I knew that, and Nij and uh, one of the followers near Jan says mm -hmm. that he's had a ACL tear, some uh, uh, rotura ACL oh. that is very serious. Okay, that's a uh, really and he's playing anyway. Should he play with with uh, with that sort of injury? I don't know. Or Probably should he leave his spot for another player. No, okay, it's his right to play. I mean, we cannot. Uh, no, of course, of ask course. him. To no, no, but it's a good idea. Yeah, I mean, in general, I don't know. I mean, probably for him, this is the tournament of his life. Yeah. It's going to be a chance once, once, once in a once lifetime. Once in a lifetime. Yeah. So if you don't play it, you might never get another chance. Yeah. So probably. And you can play. I mean, you can go to the board. Yeah. You can sit down and you can play. Even I mean, if, you're if, if, if he has no ache, if it's not aching. Yeah. Then, well, I mean, a leg injured should not be a big problem. I remember no. Tony Miles. He played, he played with his back injury, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this was even worse because he had the real problem. But you know, you know what I heard about Tony Miles? Mm -hmm. When he went to play, he was lying down. But then when he went to dinner, he was yeah. eating normally with the rest. Yeah. And some of the players were quite annoyed with this. Yeah. So... Yeah, he was a bit tricky. It's a bit tricky, tricky no? Tony. Well, he was a very special character. So who do you think is going to win? Uh, who do you think is going to win? And who would you want to win? No, I don't. I don't care who wins. Okay. I mean, uh, I respect all the players. Um, but maybe you have a personal friend. No, I think for chess it would be quite interesting Nakamura winning. Okay, for popularity. Because, yeah, mm -hmm. because he's very popular. He's very charismatic, and this could be some bait for Magnus, you know, to come back. You oh know, yes, yes, say, yes. Come on, you want to challenge uh, the, Nakamura? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. This could be something, you know. Yeah. Uh, I think Caruana is one of the strongest players in the field. Okay. And I believe somebody somebody said Nepo. He already proved two that times. he can yeah, that he can th those tournaments usually you are going to win with a plus two score, plus three score. They are very equal. Uh, there is no one dominant player. Yeah. Uh, only Magnus. No? That is true. And um, in that sense I believe uh, players with a solid background like Caruana, they're very 
the, he's going to lose very few games, mm -hmm. you know, maybe one game. Uh, but okay, a, anybody, some young... But two years ago in Madrid, Nepomniachi already won the tournament in front of these players. Yeah. Is it possible that he's a slightly weaker player overall for this type of tournament? But he prepares this tournament mentally very well mm -hmm. and the other players not so well. Is this possible? I mean, it's like when you throw a dice. I mean, uh, here some player has 20% of chance, another one has 15% to win the tournament, another one has 12%. I mean, yeah. anything can happen. I mean, I'm it's not very sure. close. Yeah, they are mm -hmm. very close. Even some young guys like Prah or Vidit uh, or Gukesh. It's unlikely, they, but possible as well. They have a chance. They have anyway. a chance. I mean, it's not 0%, of course. I mean, so. Uh, anything can happen. It's very, very equal. Uh, mm -hmm. But okay, we will see very soon. Uh, but, uh, but are you rooting for a certain player because of friendship or because? Uh, no, they are too young. I mean, I, I don't have uh, really you don't have relation, relation with, with any okay. with any of them. No, maybe, maybe you've trained one of them, or maybe you have had some some other relationship with one of them. No, no, I have good relation with many of them. I've played with uh, Caruana. Mm -hmm. I've played with some some players on the field, but uh, don't really not not a, not a relation. Yeah, okay. yeah, don't know. Okay, so I was checking the first two games. Let's check this one here. Mm -hmm. Goldstein is the player who yesterday did this H4 move. Mm -hmm. Remember I told you about? Yeah. Instead of capturing the knight. Yeah. So what do you think about this game? Eckhart well, I was a bit surprised to see a player 2300 on the top boards. Yeah. I mean, Edgar Mamedov, uh, we were checking in the Spanish broadcast. He's a young player from yeah. Kazakhstan. He's virtually as I am. Yeah. I think he already has a couple of norms. Yeah. Kazakhstan is a country where they are supporting chess a lot. I mean, they have a very active chess federation and providing conditions to the top players. And uh, Mamedov so far are doing very well. And in the game, okay, I, I, I saw that uh, he got some isolated pawn, his opponent. And um, the fact that the white knight went to d4 and later back to f3, I believe that uh, white is kind of losing tempi, comparing, and if you would uh, check the database, you would probably find yeah. this position with reverse colors. Yeah. I mean, black is white and white is black. Yeah. Because this 94 knight back. Yeah, I've uh, seen this in the Karakan, yeah. 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 Uh, but okay, I mean, it's uh, equal position, chances for both sides. Black played probably mm -hmm. bishop c7 with the idea queen d6. Yeah. And uh, how did white react? White reacted with rookie one. Rookie one? Slightly is? slow. Yeah, rookie one is not uh, the move I would play here. I mean... I would actually prefer black in this position, even... Uh, the, I agree. The, the, the computer says it's more or less equal, but... It's mm -hmm. a good isolated pawn, a good yeah. one. Pieces go bishop g4, rook a d8, mm -hmm. knight e4. All the pieces go to the sensible squares. Mm -hmm. and, and, and white doesn't have the blockade. He's missing knight b4, knight b5, d4. The knight on c3 is actually a bit weird. No, I don't like this for, for white. Yeah, no. usually you want to put a rook on d1 as soon as possible. I mean, move like queen d3 would be more standard than rook e1 or also yeah. rook c1. Rook e1 is weird. Yeah, it's strange. I think he wanted to bring the bishop to g2. Uh, probably he played g3 now, I guess. Ah, but yeah, okay. So how, this, was, the, how this, was the game? This maneuver. Yeah. yeah, this is what he's dreaming of. But uh, after g3, black h5. went h5. Wow. Well, I mean, it no. makes sense. He it, wants if the pawn gets here. Yeah, he the, wants the, to, the, to 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 make this a bit more weaker, not to yeah. weaken the king's side. Yeah. Mm. Um, now white should probably play bishop f1 to try to bring the bishop to g2. Mm. This could be instructive to show to the to mm. the to the followers. If white plays h4, he weakens the position so much that it would, even a sacrifice of e3 could be a a very dangerous shot. Well, not only dangerous, it's probably, probably, probably winning. Winning, <laughs> winning. But this is good for the... Yeah, rookie three looks very yeah, because strong. Because some of the followers might not understand yeah, why black put this. And now we can see why this is very strong. Check. And this will easy, nice easily end up in a checkmate for, for black. Yeah, this is uh, wow. very nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, nice variation, yeah. So he will play... He will, has to play... Well, he hasn't played yet. But no, he has... He should play. In this position, you want to play bishop f1, g2, knight e2, d4, something like that. But uh, but black has uh, many options here. Uh, Let's say he plays it. Yeah, mm. bishop f1, and then, okay, black can play even... Okay, bishop g4 is a move, but maybe even d4 sometimes. Ooh, bishop ooh. g4, I, I think bishop g4 is very natural here. And if white plays h3, then he's 
all, all his king side structure is going to be pretty weak. So look, even even the computer suggests this incredible move. Here. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. And, and, and coming in here, yeah. This this is. No. If, if we start getting these type of ideas or knight takes g4 even, and this is sacrificing a piece, which is yeah. not, he doesn't have to if he doesn't want to. Yeah, it's clear that uh, Black got the upper hand after the opening and uh, look at the times. Uh, Mamedov is thinking a lot. It's clear he's not feeling comfortable with the position. And uh, at this moment, uh, Black is a big favorite in this game. Yeah. Uh, okay, he's the player with more rating. The opening went very well for him. He has more time and position probably already slightly better. So this is going to be quite interesting game. Yeah. So let's have a look at the boards one and three. Yeah. One or two. By the way, I have to go in 15 minutes because okay. uh, the organizers, they want to take me oh. to the city hall. Oh, nice. We are preparing, do you know that uh, tomorrow, no, not tomorrow, sorry, Saturday, some, some of, of the games, games are played there, yeah. Yeah, we'll <clears> be <throat> played on the city hall and um, we want to make sure that uh, everything is of course, of all course. right. And, uh, so you're going to advise and make sure everything is good. Yeah, yeah, we're going to check how, <coughs> how we'll be playing hall. But only, only some of the first boards. Yeah, five top no, boards. Not the full tournament, just a few boards. No, yeah. only five top boards in the morning and in the afternoon these streamers will be invited to play there. Okay, but, th but then if the top players go and play there, Will, will they still have electronic boards? Will we still yeah. be able to see them? Yes, okay, yes, okay. yes. No, the broadcast will be fantastic. working. Yeah. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh -huh. This is the game with Yermito, yeah. but uh, probably we'll something else not happening. Yeah. No? They are thinking here? Yeah. No, okay. The, the, the game carried on here. Yeah. Uh, this is the position, actually. Yeah. Okay, pretty, pretty equal. Pretty equal, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, the white is an experienced player. Yermito, Argentinian international master, now playing under Italian hmm. flag. And, okay, he wants to have an easy game in the morning you know I, it's <laughs> i thought this one could finish in a draw yeah i thought yeah, this was this a draw is... but did you see the first move it was a bit funny because i've never seen this before which one uh, after g3 i'd never seen someone play here b6 ah, straight away it's a bit strange yeah like yeah. Enko. why this move order what i suggested was that the top players are trying to get their players out of mm. the book as fast as possible it's very provocative yeah. you know how did it go he played c4 okay makes sense Take knight a3. This looks very okay for for white. Take like this. Bishop g2. Okay, I think white is slightly better here. Mm. But uh, yeah, d4. And then now this move started all the trades. Yeah, this looks is looking for some kind of uh, easy game. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I thought instead of d4, it could be interesting to play with b3 and bishop b2. Oh, yeah. But maybe black is uh, ready to play bishop f6. Yeah, yeah. Maybe this is the trick. To have the knight on g8, you know, to delay the development. That's of why he played bishop b7 first. Maybe, yeah. maybe, because makes a lot of sense. If white would play b3, bishop b2, then okay, it's quite quite easy game, you know, for white uh, rook c1, then knight e5. But okay, it's a, it's a choice. I mean, so this is the position now. Yeah. And as you said, it looks very equal. We'll see what happens, but yeah. if mm. queen d5 check, I guess I guess the idea may be well now probably already king g1. Maybe mm. it's uh, maybe it's a move. And you know, black has to be careful because if the knight lands on c6, uh, white could be better. Probably c5 is needed here, just to to get rid of the, yeah. the possibility of the knight landing here without being able to attack it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. White can maybe make then his draw because he he can try to take on c please knight c6, and take on everything. seven, change everything and make a draw. This could be perfectly well the outcome. Maybe take on c5 yeah. and uh, start changing off everything. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty pretty equal. <coughs> but okay, we'll see. We will um, see. Okay, let's go leave this here. And uh, game number two. Game what number two on? was this one here. Yeah, this was very interesting. Yeah, and we stopped analyzing at this moment, where Black had the the option of playing h5. I think it's not. An or option. it's kind of forced. Or something like that. But then he he had a. A space disadvantage. No, if he, he needs to play. H didn't play h5 he yet. He played no, h5. He played, no, quite he played no, h5. It's almost forced. And what happened later? Bishop I like D2. black position. I like very much. Black has uh, two bishops and center. And uh, white, I believe, in this kind of situations, white needs to play quite fast. I mean, if white plays slowly, then black is going to get his bishops and the center for nothing. Yeah. And uh, at the moment, White is a bit ahead in development. He needs badly to use mm. this uh, temporary advantage 
to create some weaknesses on the open sky. I mean, I might be mistaken. Maybe F6 was not really needed. Not why needed, not, no? Why not D6? But I, I seem to remember in, in the back of my head, Yeah. I remember something like this with a pawn on E5 and the queen on E2. And, and I, I might be confusing variations, but I think there was this match between Anand and Gelfand, and mm -hmm. this variation was played in that match, in the world title match. Because, yeah. because Gelfand played this with black. And, 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 and I was playing the bishop on b2. It must be a different variation, but it was very similar to this. No, it's it's this stuff, but uh, there are many ways to play. If I then black, black reacts with f6, yes. it's well known. But what I don't like at all is knight bd2. I think this is very slow. Hmm. Usually white plays uh, with queen e2, threatening some e5, h4 very fast. Yes. In fact, you play h4 before the knight goes before the knight to knight gets Yes, yes, yes. But the way he played, I believe that black already is slightly better here, you know. Yeah. This is uh, quite nice for black. Uh, two bishops, and uh, now the knight cannot play so easily to e3 because knight f4. And if you want to control the knight on g6, you have to play g3, but then you're all weakening. the white squares, wow. Yeah, all yeah. your white squares are very weak. This, this is I dangerous. Think f6 is quite interesting because now he wants to play d5, very ambitious. He wants to play d5. So the game started quite well for the favorites on board 2 and board 3. Yep. Top rated players, even that they are playing with the black pieces, they are dominating. Yeah. Yep, and um, yep. the only game which is pretty equal is on board one, no? Yep. Cuenca, can we have a look? I didn't see for a while. Cuenca versus... Uh, Cuenca versus uh, Alexeyenko, no? Cuenca here? No, no. Cuenca? Cuenca, ah, no, Cuenca, Cuenca is playing Baba Forest. Forest. Baba sorry, Forest. sorry, yes, yes. This one we haven't checked yet, so let's go uh -huh. from the opening. Okay, so it's on there, D4, D5. Yeah. London opening. Yes. And this move order is very clever from black to play c5 very fast with the knight on g8 uh -huh. because and, knight c6 and capture. yeah uh, because if you play here c3 which yeah. is uh, very standard not knight f3 but just go that's very second, standard c3 then bishop f5 and then the the move queen b3 can be met very comfortable with queen d7 mm. and after black white plays knight <coughs> f3 now we play f6 and we start to play for an advantage with black, you know, amazing. Mm. Sometimes we can continue with g5, and uh, the position is very sharp, but in general black is doing very okay, because he has the knight on g8. So all these ideas for why it doesn't work, the bishop b5, uh, I, don't, I don't care, you know. There's a good trick here. <coughs> Look at this trick, I just spotted in another variation. Yeah. I, I know there's a very funny trick here. And you maybe should be buying you in the yes, yes. This is in another variation. This is I'm what saying, White is uh, looking for. But so this uh, is a good anti-London against the bishop f4 yeah, line. Yeah, exactly. Okay. But you have to start with d4, d5. Yeah, but Pepe Guenga, he knew it because he played quite fast this c4. It's a preparation. Uh, Dibis told me that they were, ah, okay. they knew, I mean, they were working on it. And uh, what I was a bit surprising to me to see c5 so early. Mm. I was expecting c 3 first. But he went c5, which is actually, final idea. I thought this came from a Karokan Panov variation. Yeah, it was like... And now I see it came from the London. <clears throat> yeah. The structure is the same. In general, okay, if it would be a Panov, the bishop would be on c1 and the bishop would be on c8. Yes, yes. But uh, I think these two bishops out, in general, it's in, white, in black's favor. In black's favor. In yeah. general, yes. But uh, that's why he plays c5. Because then if black goes b6, Sorry. he will be missing the bishop on d7. So how, how is the game went? C5, G6, G, uh -huh. B3, hitting yeah. the pawn, Queen C8, Knight C3, hitting the pawn. Well, it's oh. not really fair because Knight B4 later. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So you can't capture because of the Knight B4. You can show the line if yeah, you want. Yeah, so he takes here. Yeah, that, that would be a mistake. Takes here, here, and now here with very dangerous threats. Yeah, yeah we have Bishop B5 check, but... King F8. King F8, and, and, and the threats are very dangerous. Well, yeah. so winning, basically. Yeah, yeah basically. Yeah. Yeah. Winning. Okay, <coughs> so, so, of course, Jordan didn't protect the pawn. Yeah. And it still can't be captured. But now it can. Now it's time to do a protection move. Well, how do you protect? With rook d8. Okay. Okay. It looks okay. pretty equal, no? H3. But it's a fight, because it's, a it's a fight. Not, not symmetrical. No. Uh, white has a three versus two on the queen side. Very difficult to to use this majority because you yeah. need to play b4, yeah. and the queen is on the, queen is on in the, the middle. Way. Yeah. 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 
and black has five versus four on the on the king side. Uh, white can use the e file to make some pressure with yep. rookie one, but d4 is pretty weak. <coughs> I would be a bit worried uh, for yes, the be, be careful of these ideas. Yeah, mm. knight coming to e4 one day. Uh, maybe oh, not yes. now. This, yeah. But um, mm, but okay, white also has his uh, good moves, so I think it's pretty equal. Pretty equal. Okay, we'll check. So, Meg, I have to leave now because we go to... Hopefully you'll be back the at the end of the yeah. round yeah, and, sure. and you can tell us how the preparations are going. Yeah. Okay, thank okay. you so much. Miguel Yescas here, okay. giving us his insight. Thanks, Thanks a lot, Miguel. <coughs> Always good to hear the analysis of Miguel. Of course, apart from being a very uh, dynamic uh, commentator, Miguel is a, a 2600 player, although he is retired from active chess, but he's been at the top of the world, you can just check out his his tournament successes. He's a very, very good player. And as you see, he's still very sharp. Because when you've played so many years at the highest level, you get to know all the little details. And he probably still follows chess quite a lot. No? For example, this this opening uh, idea of the London uh, to get the position he wanted is very, very interesting. Okay, okay. So, I think... We're going to see a few more games, and then we're going to take our first uh, break, maybe in about 10 minutes, and then we'll come back for the second part of the tournament. So let's check some of the games we haven't seen yet. Well, the round is shaping up to be quite interesting this morning. I'm very happy. And also, uh, although it's a morning round, we're getting quite a bit of traction, which is very good. So let's carry on. If you want to see any specific game, just put it in the in the chat and we'll go to it. If not, I'll choose the games. For example, let's see the game of Sarin. We haven't seen this one yet. Sarin with black. Already under certain time pressure because Guillaume Lamarth is playing very fast. Catalan, all theory. Or very theoretical. H4, okay. Knight D2, Knight H5, E3. Now, if Black swaps the bishop, he'll recapture with the E pawn. So Black gains space on the queen side. Rook C1, Knight B6. Okay, so quite a pretty balanced position. White is slightly better because of the space advantage. But black is putting pressure on the pawn on c4. Uh, basically, black has trouble here with the development of the c8 bishop. That's his main his main problem. But at some point, he might be considering to swap on f4. So let's say white plays rook d1, for example, a normal move. Now may, maybe black can consider some swaps, some more swaps. And here, although white may be marginally better, black does have some ideas to uh, press the weaknesses. Again, the main problem, the bishop on d7 blocked in, hemmed in by the pawns, and not allowing black to have a free game with his pieces. But uh, pretty equal in any case. Uh, to win, white must open the game, and the bishops will have their, their chance to shine as well. So pretty equal. Of course, white can also play c5 here. In the case of c5, I wonder, black will probably drop back here. And again, pretty equal, but very closed in position. So uh, it's unclear to me uh, if uh, black, black's lack of space is more important than his potential pair of bishops after the exchange on f4. I think I'd probably prefer white in this position. Okay, so we'll leave this game here. We'll come back later. Okay, I'm there's already a draw. As I mentioned before, it's to be expected, some of these quick draws. Um, Jadish, 24-91, against Maxime Lagarde, 2640, where the stronger player gets a sort of rest day. Let's see how the game finished. 
French defence. According to the computer, this is a mistake, but it does threaten pawn takes pawn. White captured. Drops back, attacking this one here. And black is able to recover the pawn. <clears throat> Instead of bishop d3, the computer suggests b4, protecting these. And now I'd really like to see what is the idea against knight takes e5. Bishop f4. Knight takes check, queen takes, and now typically the move here is e5, but something bad is going to happen. Yeah, check, and now we have a problem here. If we block with the bishop, we exchange the bishops, and if you take with the queen, you lose the pawn. So tactically, this e5 doesn't work, therefore white has a better position here. Um, this is a miss by Jadish. Maybe Lavard felt that he wasn't playing well today after this queen a5. Here he sacrificed the pawn, gets a bit of compensation. Not much compensation for the pawn, but it's White who offered a draw here. <clears throat> of course, white has an extra pawn, black has some compensation, but he probably thought it wasn't enough. I don't think it's enough. I think white is better here and could have carried on playing perfectly well. But okay, a draw in the game between Lagarde and Jadish. No other games have been decided yet. War 21. There's no moves. Let's see Sanin's game. Where's Sanin playing? Here. Yeah, we saw this one before. Alright, what's happening here in this game here? I'm going to notify board 21. So, this is the game between Aravind and Momchil Petkov. Mm -hmm. Spanish opening with knight c3. This is a, uh, a sort of sideline, which is interesting to take your opponent out of theory. And this is a standard state play. Um, pawn takes pawn is a normal move. Bishop g4 is a mistake because white can play pawn takes pawn. Pawn takes pawn, queen takes queen, rook takes queen and knight takes e5 winning a pawn and notice that there's no mate on d1 because of the knight on c3. Black played knight d7 and white captured leaving black with two isolated pawns on the c-file. However, black does have the pair of bishops, so the imbalance is there. b3 to play bishop b2, maybe knight a4 at some point. And as we can see already, the bishops are occupying good diagonals. White again trying to get his knight to a good square here. 
and this is the position. Okay, so one interesting uh, point of strategy is that when your opponent has the pair of bishops, it's generally a good idea to be able to swap off one of the two bishops. Uh, that normally works better for the player who doesn't have the pair of bishops. So the fact that white has played bishop d2 here and is able to swap off the bishop, that is generally something that favors white. <clears throat> also, he has access to the square on f5, and the double pawns are still there. So I'd actually prefer white's position here if I had to choose a side. Not by much, but I'd still take white's position. Black does have the option of playing knight to c5, maybe knight six e6 afterwards, trying to uh, jump to one of these two squares. So black also has his uh, chances, but I think white is slightly better here. Oh, this is an interesting game. Very weird, very weird, tremendously weird. Pravin Barakaskaran is playing a very, very strange opening here. Let's check. Sicilian. Okay, this line, theoretically, it's supposed to be bad because of e5. Knight d5 and bishop d2. This is theoretically bad. And here, bishop f8 is only move. I played this before. Bishop a5 has been played against me, and also bishop e7. And normally, against these moves, you have queen to g4. And the trick is that if black castles, you have bishop to h6, and you're winning material. However, funnily enough, after g6, bishop takes rook is not the best move. The best move is to play h4. And play h5, and do your best to try and open up the file and go for the mate. This is theory and very good for white. But black played bishop f8, very provocative. Queen g4 anyway, h5, h4. Now we might be threatening knight to b5. So a6, d6, and h3. Tremendously provocative. I mean, I've never seen this line moving the pawn. So, black has broken. Black has broken all the rules of opening theory by launching his pawns, moving all pawns and no pieces. So, look at all the pieces on the first rank. But even so, he's only at a small disadvantage. This gives us an idea of the advance of opening theory. I mean, a few years ago, no one would have played like this with black. I mean, just moving pawns around, it's not the way to play. But nowadays, they use the computers to study the openings, and the openings are, these ideas are proposed by the computers, which does indicate that they must be okay. Of course, you're treading a very fine line here, playing so many pawn moves. There's a lot of risk in doing this. You could fall back in development and get crushed very, very fast. Anyway, Pichot played castle, and his idea is to accept a weak king, but to push ahead and try and crush Black's king in development. So this will definitely be a very, very interesting game to follow. We will be keeping a very close eye on the game between Pichot and Paravin Balaskara. Okay, guys, we've done about an hour and a half of broadcast. I think I, I'm, I've well earned a small break. I'm going to go and grab a coffee, a couple of phone calls, and I'll be back for the second part of the broadcast. Back soon.
Guys, we're back. I had a small coffee, I had a small break, talked to a couple of students. One of them had lost his game. He made a tactical mistake, big one. Talked to one of the organizers, always talking about chess. But now we're back to carry on with the broadcast of this very interesting fourth round of the tournament. Let's make sure everything is working properly. Let's check the stream. Yes, the stream is here. Everything seems to be working okay. <clears throat> and we can carry on with the, with the tournament. Okay, let's close this. Keep this open. We have the chat. Remember, you can always leave your questions in the chat box and I'll do my best to answer them as I'm trying to do up to now. Is this the chair? The other chair. The other, the other chair. There you go. Our sponsors, a big thank you for all the sponsors of the tournament. And let's get on with the with the tournament round. Let's check the results just to see if someone has won or lost. And remember, those of you who are enjoying this uh, broadcast here on the Spanish one, remember that today is a double round. <clears throat> so round in the morning at 10 o'clock and round in the afternoon. Let me check the, the hour, very important, the schedule. I have to be clear on the schedule. Schedule for this afternoon, Thursday, 4th of April, that's today. We have 5 o'clock the round, and then at 10 o'clock, there's the Blitz tournament, which in principle I won't be playing. Although I feel like playing chess, but I'm so tired at the end of the day after double round. Tomorrow, only one round in the afternoon. Attention there. And two rounds at 10 and 5 on Saturday and the last round in the morning at 10 o'clock. So this is the schedule for the rest of the tournament. And for the moment, although there's been a couple of draws, they don't appear on the scoring list. So no one's updated yet <clears throat> the, the scoring table, but we do know that Lagarde and Sidarth, the game has finished in a draw. Okay, so the last game we were looking at just before I went on the break was this game between Pichot and Pravin. We left the game after Castle. And I think there's been a couple of moves. Queen to h4, offering the exchange of queens. Queen takes queen. Rook takes queen. And Pichot is now considering his alternatives. I think without queens, black shouldn't be in so much trouble. The lack of development normally is punished by attack and you can't attack so well if the queens have been traded off the board. So that is obviously something which black will be, uh, will appreciate the fact that he's been able to exchange queens. I would personally play g3 here, attacking the rook, keeping my chain of pawns intact. And then when the rook drops back, probably I try and create some sort of imbalance, maybe playing c4, c5, maybe capturing on d6, but it's not going to be easy for me to, say, to, to claim an advantage without the queens. I think the position is relatively equal. Okay, let's check some other games. Okay, this is interesting. The, the game on board, um, on board three has finished in a draw, and both Miguel and myself, we both thought that Black's position was, was much better. However, after h5, white played rook c1, <clears throat> bishop d7, knight a4, knight e4, very, very correct, knight c3, and here, 
they repeated positions <coughs> and the game ended in a three-fold draw. I think this is a good result for Edgar Mamedov with white because his position is slightly worse and surprising result for Gorsheim with black. Um, we, 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 both myself and Miguel thought that here something slightly more aggressive like bishop g4 would be the way to go. But maybe black was content with uh, getting a draw with black and <clears throat> taking a rest for the double round in the afternoon. So who am I to say if this was a good result or not? But I think, uh, I think in, in, in certain certain way black uh, lost uh, an opportunity here. For example, after knight e4, maybe he could have played something different. For example, here, the computer suggests rook d8 and uh, sacrifice the pawn for counterplay. But of course, this involves a pawn sacrifice, which is never totally clear. So it's understandable that white didn't want to go into this. So this game finished in a draw. <clears throat> Let's see if there's any other games that have finished already. No, the rest of the games are being played. So let's check some of the other games. Okay, so on board 22, it's funny because all the boards, all the boards are in broadcast, but uh, number 21 isn't broadcasted, but 20 and 22 they are. Okay. Let's see what's happened here. We'll try and find out why board 21 isn't in broadcast, but 20 and 22 are. So, Tomas Sosa is playing this game against Adar Tarhan, and he's already got a decisive advantage, so as Sosa is a very enterprising game, it might be interesting to see how the game went. Okay, so we have the Italian opening. <laughs> Many interesting details here, but at the end we have a standard Italian game. Playing with the uh, knights on the king side. And here the pawn on e5 could have been captured, but maybe it's poisoned. Let's see what would happen if here black would play something like bishop takes f2 check followed by queen f6 and the rook may be hanging in some of the variations so it's a sort of poison pawn Thomas preferred to finish his development which is very sensible knight f4 looks like a decent move it does attack the pawn on d3 but according to the computer this is a mistake so let's see why d4 Okay, this knight would be hanging on f4 if black captures the pawn. Queen f6. It's a normal based on the previous move, but knight e4 hits the queen. And although black is threatening mate, let's see how this will finish. Take, take, and knight h4. <clears throat> the queen is in trouble. Doesn't have many squares to go to. And also, notice how the three pawns blunt very effectively the bishops on b6 and b7. So white is under control here. Queen h7, bishop c2 threatening a de devastating discovered check here. Black is in big trouble here. I mean, look at what is it, what he's had to do. This is an international master. 
He's had to put his queen on h8 to avoid losing. Black is in trouble. White is going for the kill. Threatening checkmate in one move. <coughs> g5 only move. Queen f5, that's very nice. Again, threatening check. And this looks like very soon game over, my friends. Let's say he captured the knight. Check. 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 And mate. So we know the threat. As we know the threat, we can try and find the defenses. <coughs> I'm sorry about that. My throat is a bit... <coughs> is suffering a bit because of the double round. A lot of talking. Certain coldness. <clears throat> okay, so now we know the threat. We can think about the defenses. The only defense is bishop c8. To control the squares where the queen will win. And here several ways to win but this looks like the most obvious check check and now we need to find a winning move let's see <clears throat> let's play queen e4 for the moment hitting the knight and the rook behind <coughs> And also, by the way, threatening, knight takes f5. There's a very nice mate here. Look, bishop d7, knight f5. And now the threat is... Look at this lovely mate. So there's some really cool checkmates that can happen on the board if black makes a, a bad move. So here, he really has to take on h4. And the line could be like this. Yeah, I'm not quite sure if black is going to survive this onslaught of attacking pieces. I mean, the, the, other, the other rook is coming in. There's this check here. This is very, very, very dangerous. Yeah, this is going to be lost very soon. I mean, as soon as the other, the other rook comes in, there's no chance no chance here. Let me just play a random move, this one here. Then we get a sacrifice. And bishop g6. Ah, this is completely lost. Completely lost. One of the tactics would be like this. Take, check, check, and mate. So all these tactics are winning for a white. Thomas is going to win this game, and I'm going to ask him to come to the broadcast. Okay, so let's put it in, in broadcast. Okay, so I put I put um, <clears throat> a request to bring <clears throat> Thomas here to the broadcast studio. I think this game is going to be over very soon because not only Thomas has a winning position, but also he <clears throat> he normally uh, plays.
quite fast and I don't think he'll have much trouble in finding this queen e4 move followed by the knight f5 or the variations we've seen. So I've put a request in for him to come along and hopefully we'll have him here. He is Argentinian but uh, I think he speaks English as well and if he doesn't well I'll interview him in Spanish and then translate for for the fans okay that won't be a problem <coughs> mm. okay no other results yet let's see if it's updated not yet we'll keep an eye on this game uh, Thomas played already well he played Queen d5 which is also I think very good because it also introduces the threat Knight to g6, winning the queen. So, so yeah, that's even more dangerous. Let's see. Knight takes d4 is the answer. And now, knight g6 would win the queen. But also, very good would be pawn takes knight. So now, Tomas has just to, has to think which of the different ways he has is the cleanest way to win. And uh, I wonder which one he'll take. We'll stay here for a moment. So you can win the queen with knight to g6. The queen would be trapped. And also there's the threat of the mate on e7. So I think he'll probably go for that one. Knight here. Notice that bishop to e6. There's a mate on e7. So this would actually be a very nice way to finish the game. <coughs> I think black would capture the bishop. And then... There's no mate, I think. No, there, 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 there actually is a mate, but Tomas would just capture the queen. And I just don't see a way to, to continue here because we, we not only have a queen up, but we're also attacking the rook here. And also we're um, preparing all sorts of checkmates in this position. So I think it's just uh, clearly lost and maybe will be lucky and uh, Adar Tahan will resign and will get Tomas in very quickly. So I've put the request in and hopefully someone will bring him. Okay, we'll leave this here for the moment. He's still thinking of his move. He has different options to finish off the game. He'll want to make the more, the, cle the cleanest win. No other games have finished. <clears throat> Let's check on the game between Chitambaram and his opponent Mompil Petkov. We left the game here. Chitambaram played rook to e3. I think he wants to transfer the rook to the king's side. Queen e7. It's not such a good move because knight f5 arrives with Tempi. But black wanted to put the queen on e6. And now white plays knight to h4. And he's able to complete his task of transferring the rook to g3. Now actually black is in big trouble. Because when the rook gets to g3 we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 pieces prepared to launch the attack. And this will be very dangerous for, very dangerous indeed, for uh, the player with black. Very, very dangerous. I, I wonder if he'll be able to overcome this uh, direct attack. Uh, I'd be actually quite amazed because the, so many pieces on the king's side is very dangerous. By the way, Notice how the bishop on a6, although very active, is hitting what we say in Spanish, aire. So it's actually hitting the air. There's, no, there's nothing in the way of the bishop, but nothing to attack or to capture. It just controls squares. Now, that is good in one sense, but at the same time, if the bishop can tra cannot transfer to another good diagonal, sometimes it's uh, irrelevant. The bishop is there, but as long as we avoid stepping on the squares it controls it's all good for us and Chitambaram is playing on the dark squares you see all the pieces move on the dark squares 
So that's very, very intelligent for him. Okay, let's jump back to Tarjan's board. And he's still thinking. He hasn't played yet. So let's move on to some of the other boards. Okay, so on the first board, <clears throat> the position is still fairly equal. Alexeyenko is trying to get something out of the symmetrical equal position. And now he's preparing an attack on f2, which Sebastian should try and stop with a move such as, for example, queen to f3 or even e3. However, if white has to play e3, then the bishop on c1 is blocked in. And this could prove to be a bit dangerous. The, the, these types of situations, I wouldn't like Sebastian to have to play a position like this because although material is equal, he can't finish up his development. And while he's trying to develop his pieces, black can successfully launch an attack on the king's side. So this would be a, a this would be dangerous. Possibly not losing totally, but definitely something to avoid. So I think he has to play queen to f3. At, at least trying to get the bishop out to a safe square on c3. If he gets this, then he's okay. <clears throat> so black is slightly better. Alexeyenko probably understands that he can play for a win in this position. Okay, meanwhile, Marcin and Darda. Miguel said that this position was very good for black. He liked it quite a lot. But there's been some simplifications. White is finishing his development, so the, the position is fairly equal. Lub Krimoski. Let's see this game for the beginning. <coughs> Queen's Gambit. Lube just sidestepping all theory and just developing his pieces. And we'll end up probably with hanging pawns configuration. <clears throat> black and white both are playing very sensibly. And finally, as black does not want to capture on c4, Lube goes for c5. Bishop to b5, putting some pressure on the queen side and central squares. And finally, achieving an interesting situation. He's opened up the queen side, but reminds black that his attention is focused on the king side. f6 weakens the black's position, but controls the e5 square. Queen d2, this could be an idea now. And returning to h3. Okay, he's weakened the queen side, the king side. Black has blocked in his bishop. And now he goes for the attack. Okay. So I think the reason he brought back his knight is if he goes h4 straight away, black has some extra ideas like h5 and g4, things like that. But by bringing his knight back first, now. You can't advance and you can't play h5. So, this is the position. Loop playing very nicely, this, very nicely. Rook c2 isn't such a good move. Black can swap rooks and bring the other rook to c8. But he doesn't. So, white takes over the file. And here we are. Here we are. Well, I think the black is more or less okay. <clears throat> I thought was he, he was in trouble, but maybe it's not so bad. He can try and swap off the last rook. The four pawns are more or less controlling central squares. Two bishops behind. The king is not in such danger as it was before. So I think black is gradually climbing his way to, to equality.
Okay, let's check, check in on some other games. Aha! Chigaev has defeated Diego Macias. Okay, so let's see what happened in this game. Chigaev is a Russian player who has just, uh, just been accepted for uh, Spain, a Spain Federation. So now he plays for Spain. And I think he's living in Spain as well. And Diego Macias is a Spanish uh, under 16 player. I think he's um, world number two in the last world championship or the last European championship. The last European championship, I was there. In the, he came second in under 16. So a huge talent. And although he appears here with FM, uh, really he is an IM already confirmed. But the title hasn't been given yet. But of course, with 2478, he's more, more looking for his grandmaster norms than for IM norms, which I think he already has. So let's see what happened in this game against Maxim Chigaev. Okay, Queen's Gambit. Maxim just bringing his pieces to the board, trying to get Diego out of theory. But finally, we'll have a position which possibly Maxim thinks he can try and win against the, the Spanish player. No queens, but it's a middle game without queens. Bishop to e2 generally means opening up the c file and transferring the bishop to e3. That's generally what this move means. Knight to d2, knight to g5. Now he's going for bishop to f3. Knight to e4, hitting the bishop. If white gets the pair of bishops, he's doing well. Take, take. But now g7 is also attacked. So Diego is in trouble here. Knight to b4. Take, take. The pawn on g7, I think, is poisoned for the moment. Because if you capture, the rook goes to g8, hitting the bishop and also hitting a mate on g2. So this would be very bad for, for white. So he played a3. If the bishop is blocked, then maybe he can capture the pawn. Rook d8, okay. So in chess, <coughs> there's a saying that when your opponent attacks you, you should normally think of stopping the attack. And sometimes you can go on the counterattack. But mostly you have to stop the attack of your opponent. So the knight is under attack here. So mostly you need to drop back and stop this attack. Sometimes you can create your own counterattack, but it's risky because the other saying in chess is whoever captures first captures best. And if the other player starts capturing you, you might find yourself in some sort of tactical skirmish and end up on the wrong end. Let's see what happened here. Rook d8. Capture. Here comes the counterattack. Bishop f3. Now he's counterattacking here. So it, this needs to be exchanged. And now the intermediate move. Fantastic. Wonderful. And now you've just lost a piece. So this is a wonderful example of attack, parry the attack. Don't go on the counterattack. Because if you go on the counterattack, you might find that there's an intermediate move which loses for you. I'm going to post this one on Twitter. I think it's quite interesting. So this would be rook d8. Bad move because of the counterattack. Let's post this on Twitter. Okay. So we take the position. Put it in paint.
let's post this on Twitter and see if we get some reactions. Okay, so hopefully Grandmaster Chigaev just attacked the knight on b4. And I am elect Matthias Pino opted to counterattack with Rook d8. What did he miss? Okay, let's see if we get any reactions on Twitter for this interesting position. Just post it. If anyone wants to go in on Twitter, you'll be able already to tell the, the, the answer. Okay, so we're going to go and check Nihal now. But first, I think we should quickly jump back to the position on, on uh, the board of, um, of Tomas Sosa to see how he's doing. Let's see if he's finished off his opponent or not. See, he's still there. What happened here? Let's see. What did he play? So when knight takes d4, he didn't go for knight to g6. He went for the capture of the knight. And now he played queen to c6, okay? So he's allowing his opponent to come onto f2, but he's threatening. Queen takes a6, a mate, and also he's still eyeing the rook on e8. Quite a good move. Now... Of course, if his opponent comes with queen takes f2, which he just did, he's going to play king to h1. And then, of course, the threat is knight, is queen to h6 and mate. And I'm not quite sure how he's going to parry that mate. So we'll stay here for the moment, but I think it could be easily that Tomas... <clears throat> will be winning this game very, very soon. I just don't see a way for his opponent to stop all those checks. Of course, his opponent can sacrifice the queen. This is always possible. Um, but I don't think he will. So, what do you want me to check? Uh, Nihal's game? Hi, Harry. Could you check a war madame's position? And also the game of Bradbury with the Tory attack. Okay, so let's check those three. But if Tomas comes, we'll go to the live interview as a priority. I'm going to see if someone is taking care of that. Let's make sure someone's on it. Okay. Hopefully someone's following Sosa's game attentively. So first of all, let's check Nihal. 
yesterday afternoon it wasn't so interesting, but today there are really, really cool positions, very, very interesting attacks. <coughs> so where's Nihal? Here we go. Okay, so Nihal. We left the position here. We left it more or less here. So Nihal, instead of playing knight takes f4, he went for f5, trying to get a stone wall position in. Okay. Here he had the option of capturing en passant, opening up the file for the rook. Of course, that was an interesting position. He played more solidly. And now this is very typical. We get the knight out of the way, and then we try and push the knight back. Also, we could even get this knight out of the way and trap the knight. So it would be, it would be good for black to find a way to escape with this knight. Now he's going for this. So black exchanges off a couple of pieces, gets a bit of space for his pieces. And now, most interestingly, against f3, you're going to have to sacrifice the knight, which he did. So Nikhala sacrificed the piece for two pawns. Of course, now he's going to try and get it back, but knight h, f1 will be the move that's played. And if f4, take, take, he does have some compensation for the piece, but I'm not totally sure if it's enough. I would probably say that it's not enough, which doesn't mean he can't win. But I don't think this is enough compensation for the piece. So the thing is, why why did he exchange on e5? Because he could, he could have just gone back with the knight here. The, the computer suggests that his move was correct. The piece sacrifice is the correct move. But uh, it's still weird to me. Actually, the computer suggests that instead of sacrificing on g3, the better sacrifice was on c5, which is unbelievable. And now b6. Now, this is, this is a computer chess at its best. I mean, come on. Who's going to sacrifice the piece on the queen side when it can be sacrificed on the king side for the attack? But the computer suggests this is better than the other line. It's unbelievable. Do you think Nikhal's solid, solid approach provides even weak opponents higher draw chances? And that's why he's fallen behind. I wouldn't say he's fallen behind. I'd just say that reaching 2700 and, and staying there is tremendously difficult. And it also depends on the invitations you get to top tournaments or not. And Nikhal doesn't get very many invitations to top tournaments. He plays a lot of open tournaments. And when you play open tournaments, it's not always easy to, to, to gain a rating. Uh, Nikhal is very strong. Also, I have noticed that Nikhal sometimes doesn't win games a lot of draws maybe because he's too solid today he's playing very aggressively maybe he just wants to try and defeat his opponent okay so Tomas is still there he's still playing so let's check the game <clears throat> the game of war madame here we are okay let me just go Go through the game very quickly. Delayed Rui is exchange. I've done this every now and then, but against weak opposition, not against so strong an opposition. Warmer now is just manoeuvring around and then opens up the game. He'll try and prove that in the opposite colored bishop Positions that can arise, he's better. But it's difficult to prove that. Now it's bishop against knight, the imbalance. This is a nice, a nice maneuver. c4 and queen f2 with a double attack. But his opponent spotted that he can defend f7, and if black is captured on c5, he gets the pawn back on d3. Well spotted by his opponent. Kaiserbeck, Nor what's his name? Kaiserbeck, Norgeberg. So now he is threatening the pawn, but black's in time to protect it. Ooh, I wasn't expecting this one. I was expecting more either b6 or rook c8. But this one, 
This is aggressive. Protection and attacking chances. Take, take. He's going for the mate. But this rook could prove to be <clears throat> misplaced later on. Yeah. Yeah. Black seems to be okay, but I actually prefer white's position here. However, here, the computer says white has a very good move. Rook to d4. Pushing the queen back. And then doubling rooks. Hmm. Okay, we'll see what happens here. So, Harry, War Merdam is a very good player. He's young, aggressive, very good player. But it's very... I think it wouldn't be sensible for me to say if he has real winning chances in the third round. There are a huge amount of players here who win this tournament. It's an open tournament with 250 players in the Group A. I mean, any one of them, of the top players, could win. It's too early to say. But, of course, he's in for a chance, as Eddie Gaizi, as Nihal as any of the top players here. So, a chance, yes. Will he do it? We'll see. Okay. Someone's coming in. Ah, Tomas. <laughs> Fantastic. Hello. Sit down, Tomas. Tomas. How are you, Michael? We can do the interview in English if you want, or Spanish yeah. if you prefer Spanish. No, but no, English is good. good. Yeah, it's good. If I don't understand something, no, you I understand everything. You, you understand time. everything. So, let me set the stage here for the interview. We've been looking at your game. Perfect. And it's yeah. unbelievable. I understand you probably won. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'd like you to help us understand it a bit better. But before, let's just put the game on the board. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you the mouse now. We were lucky that your game was on broadcast today because it was really, really exciting. Yeah. So, before we, we look at the game, let me set the stage for, for you guys. Para los que me siguen en castellano, Tomás, eh, argentino, pero viviendo en Barcelona. For those following me in English, Tomás is an Argentinian grandmaster who lives in Barcelona for many years. Also, uh, he's a, um, what we call today a social influencer. So also he we does a lot of, stuff, <laughs> lot of stuff for different media, but a very strong player, very strong player. And today he played a very enterprising game with a lot of attacking ideas and especially to get that queen to h8. I mean, you have to have a very yeah. <laughs> special sense of attack. So I'm going to throw the mouse over, over to you. Okay. And what I'd like to do is down here, here, right? okay. Here are the clicks, and just take Perfect. us through the game. See, see, tell us yes. your thoughts. Okay, first I have to say that it was really funny because when I was preparing my opponent, I saw that he played almost all the openings as possible. Okay. Uh, so I decided to not prepare. That's what I do as well. When he <laughs> yeah, he played Caro, uh, Sicil all the Sicilians, yeah. C45, and also sometimes some, I don't know, some lines like Knight C6, Knight F6, something really weird. So I decided to. Uh, just relax and, <laughs> and uh, I don't know, don't prepare. Uh, I was lucky uh, because I I have one course with Ray Enigma okay. uh, in Spanish, of yeah, course. Yeah. Uh, we started to sell it like 20, di 20 days ago Okay. and it's actually the Enigmatic Italian. Oh. So it is kind of the, the same that we, I play today. Uh, actually, do, you, do you think your opponent prepared? I don't think so, no. because he speaks English and... Okay. It's just the, a yeah. coincidence. Exactly, but probably if he's, uh, he speaks Spanish, probably maybe he can say, so can say it. But, okay, actually it's all this order that is really weird for white. Usually people play C3 in some yes. moments or C4. Yes. I, I, I said that there must be something going behind the scenes, which I didn't know about, because mm -hmm. I've never seen this. So what is the main difference? Yeah, the idea is that I want to wait uh, for D6. To play c3 because if wh when I play c3, suppose uh, here or actually a few moves ago, okay, here, suppose here, for example, yeah, yeah uh, then he can break with d5 directly. So my d3 pawn is sometimes is a uh, okay. bit weak, okay, okay. So the idea to play like this is uh, ha uh, to protect my d3 pawn, and if he plays d5, it's possible. Mm -hmm. Then I take and I take and um, knight e4, we need some tempo okay. for this bishop, okay. and then castle, and, and it's a normal, uh, normal position, mm -hmm. but yeah, I, then I don't need my pawn in c3, it's uh, 
I have like one extra tempo if we compare with the. the but if he I plays think. d6, then you do play d6. Uh, he, he would lose a tempo if he then goes d5. Exactly. So nice. if he plays d6, then I play <coughs> d, uh, c3. Nice. Uh, I think that he understood this because he starts to play with the pawn in d7. Uh, probably he prepared or, or he likes the, the ideas with d5 directly. Yeah. Hmm. I saw that my opponent uh, is like a dynamic player, so I try to. Um, to miss this kind of lines, mm -hmm. and actually it's funny because this is what I recommend <coughs> in, in the course. So, mm -hmm. yeah, he played b5, and this for me it was really weird. But the funny stuff is that I played the same idea uh, uh, with black like seven years ago cool. against one friend, uh, and I lost terrible. And actually, I did today the same that my friend did to me <laughs> okay. seven years ago. Okay, so it was lucky. Uh, I was lucky. That's very honest. fortunate. Yeah. Yeah, he's trying to play like one arch archangel. Is a uh, the, the name in English? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like um, the Spanish it's very, opening. It's very similar, yes. Yeah, yeah, but the stuff is that in the Spanish I, I do like bishop b5, bishop b4, and bishop b3. And here I'm doing bishop c4, bishop b3. So, so one, I'm winning a tempo. One yeah. tempo, yeah. Yeah, that's the the idea of this order. It's pretty tricky. Yeah, uh, this knight b2 yeah, yeah. and bishop b3. And also h3 is oh, sorry, it's always, uh, always a really useful move. Yeah. And also sometimes if he, so for example, he plays, uh, I don't know, here, uh, d6, he's free, and some h6, yep. then uh, I didn't castle, so I, I can go... Oh, you have the play. option, you have the option if you yeah. want it. Analyze all of this in the okay. course, it's okay. really interesting. So, if you're Spanish, pay yeah. attention, <laughs> and maybe you can check out the Enigma Italian course. Yeah, very yeah, interesting. Exactly. Okay. So, finally, he started to think a lot, and I was uh, like quiet, uh, here, rookie one. Bishop b6, and here I understood that now I, I don't have more tempos to to wait because yeah. I have to play or c3 or knight f1. The idea is that if I, I finally I decide to go uh, c3, but if I go knight f1, I suppose that he wants to break with d5. I'll break with d5. Yeah, takes, t uh, knight takes, and then I don't have knight e4. I have to go by c3, and it's also a good position, mm -hmm. really similar to the game. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I decide to go c3. Okay. Because if he goes d5, then I takes, uh, knight takes, and then uh, knight e4. Knight e4. So yeah. I was waiting here h6. I was sure that he, he wants to play with d5 uh, only to hold uh, his idea. So here it's different because uh, I play okay, knight f1, mm -hmm. uh, he plays d5, mm -hmm. pawn take, knight takes, and then I go knight c3. Yep. Um, if I take here, he gets a lot of compensation, takes takes, rook takes. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes there are some tricks like bishop f2. And queen f6, and we, we saw this in the, in the uh, broadcast, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. But here uh, the difference is that he played h6, uh, so now all the white squares are really weak. Yeah. The lightest court. So uh, usually, if he has the pawn in h7, then he can go f6 and hold there. Yeah, yeah. it's solid. But sometimes I have to break with d4. Sometimes I have to go knight h4, uh, knight f5. But okay, it's a other game. But mm -hmm. if he plays here with f6, uh, now it's worse because knight h4 and you have five, all, all the like, squares. Yeah, yeah. queen g4. <coughs> maybe it's uh, a lot of advantage for me. I don't know. I was not sure, but I know all this kind of position with one of colors, and I was sure that uh, it's okay for me. So uh, here I didn't expect knight f4. Probably is almost losing. Um, he said to me right now that he 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 missed d4. He didn't see it. You block off the bishops and everything is working for you. After yeah, yeah. Right? D4 is. Uh, I think that yeah, it's the best move. Uh, but even if sometimes if I, if I take here, it's also a good position. I mean, could be okay as well. Yeah, knight e2, knight h5 could be interesting. I don't know if my knight is strong mm -hmm. or not, but okay. Uh, then probably he has to protect the pawn and then d4. Yeah. But in that case, I have to check knight a5, c5, the bishop, yeah. I was surprised about knight f4 because yeah, the yeah. computer spotted d4 very quickly and I yeah. understood that if there's no tactics. Exactly. Yeah, knight c2, I had to check. Claro, why, why would you play knight f4 if, if there's no tactics? Maybe you thought there would be some tactics. Yeah. Uh, he, he said that he, over, he, he missed. Uh, he just missed it in that yeah. Scene, yeah. I was thinking that maybe, okay, he played queen f6, so maybe it's losing, but I, I thought... Knight g6 to the Knight g6, yeah. It's, um, mm. I think that my position is clearly better. Uh, I was thinking something like queen d3. To threat the knight. Exactly, but he has knight a5, mm. and if I takes knight uh, b... Yeah. I was thinking something like this, I was not sure if this is, is, there, is working or not. Is there tactics not. there? And I b3 and queen c4. I was thinking to <laughs> to leave this roof. I go knight f5. Yeah, because of, for example, if he takes, I think that here he has maybe other other moves. Mm -hmm. but maybe bishop f3 first mm -hmm. or something. 
But then I have this, or bishop h6, also interesting. And here, pawn take, and wow. he can't go here. He's at 97. Wow. He, uh, and he's mating g7. So wow. I was thinking all of this. <coughs> uh, I don't know, sometimes h5 in the middle. I, I was just, um, I don't know, just thinking about this. And then he played queen f6. Uh, okay, so while he's thinking of his move, you're pondering these different uh, variations, but without going too far into detail, just looking at the ideas. And then when he plays queen f6, yeah. then you start calculating specific variations. Yeah, That's here the idea, no? Here I was sure that I had to win, uh, but I was not sure with which way. Which one? Okay. Yeah. Actually, the the, the first uh, idea that I saw is pawn take. I understood that he wanted to play uh, knight takes because his pawn takes here. Yeah. And knight takes three. And now, now this is dangerous. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, so here I saw rook e5, okay. rook takes e5, uh, extra piece, and I have all protected, I guess. But uh, here he has rook a d8, so my queen is um, threat. I have to move, like queen, queen f1, and then maybe he can take. Uh, and I was not sure here, so I decided. Um, because yeah. queen c3 is coming. Uh, yeah. The computer might find a win, but but if I was white here, I'd be very worried about this Yeah, position. I was worried about this. And, mm -hmm. uh, so I was not sure. And also here I saw rook f5. Could be interesting. Uh, because I, I, I sacrificed my queen right now. But the knight is hanging. So here I start to calculate bishop f2, king here. Uh, check, king f1, queen b6, mate here. Knight d4, rook e8 is made here, so bishop d2, knight d2. Oof. So I started to calculate all of this and I said, why? <laughs> why I have to go here? It's not necessary. Why would you go into this? Uh, exactly. Course. So then uh, I realized that uh, knight d4 is a simple move. Very simple move. Yeah. And, think, and knight uh, h4 and then bishop takes f4. This was fantastic. This is yeah. very good. I think that here he has to play queen f5. Queen f5 better. Yeah, yeah. it's the best yeah. move. And here I was thinking something like bishop c2 or uh, maybe takes here and f4. Actually, if I takes, he has to take with queen, queen because if he takes with pawn knight h4 again. It's very similar, yeah. Yeah, it's very similar. If he goes there, it's the same. And if he goes um, queen d7. Maybe slightly better for him with queen d7 than the other one, but it's still Yeah, bad. but here I have a queen h5 and oh. I'm doing knight f6, queen g6, oh. uh, knight f5. Oh, <laughs> so so this is crushing as well, yeah. I think it's crushing, yeah. The weakness on h6, all because of the weakness yeah, on h6. Yeah, you see. So, um, here he has to take with queen, and I was thinking something like um, g3 first, queen f5, knight h4. Uh, if he goes here, it's kind of the game, uh, kind of similar. Um, here I was thinking queen h5, I'm doing knight f6 if pawn takes queen g6, so if knight f6, uh, king here, knight g6, and wow. the queen is wow. uh, hanging. But here I, 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 I saw knight e7 knight to protect g6, so here he can take, and uh, this diagonal is open, so I was thinking take, rook a e8, and I was not sure about this. Mm -hmm. So I realized that this is uh, <coughs> really complicated, really unclear, but here I saw bishop c2, I think that is a really interesting move. Because I'm doing c3, the only square for queen is uh, f5, and then I have knight d6. Yeah. 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 So here I was thinking h5 to go to go there. Uh, knight f c5. This pawn is hanging. Uh, so I saw c6 and something like c3, um, queen f5, h4 to hold the knight. He can't go um, far away because I have knight f6, queen mm -hmm. f3. I was thinking all of this. I see that computer doesn't understand, right? It's, but, but, it's going. But don't worry because okay. it's, it's just what goes up and down. You need okay. it to stabilize. Okay. Yeah, so I was not sure about all of this, but I, I was sure that I'm kind of winning. You have a very good position. Yeah. yeah. But for but for him it's clear that queen f5 is better than queen g6. I, I'm sure. I mean, queen yes. g6, queen, queen g6, a7. We go forced to the game and it's this is a disaster. A yeah. disaster. Yeah, I was surprised. Like he, he played. I saw his did games. He, and did he, he play? Played. He played fast. Uh, so so. I don't remember here. Uh, if, if you click on game, maybe you can see how much time he took. Like right here, right? Three minutes. No, no, but this is the. Uh, oh. oh, oh, did it, did did you see it when you clicked? Yeah. Oh, three minutes. Three yeah. minutes. Yeah. He played, I mean, maybe not so much. I think that he was just uh, like. Um, this is bad. Yeah. Whatever. No. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, tilt, right? Is it yeah, but knight h4, you have to calculate it. I mean, yeah, of course. What do you think is going to happen with your queen on h7? I mean, 
Okay. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Um, here I think that I'm winning. I was sure. Bishop c2. Maybe he missed also bishop c2. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Here, if he plays a five, he's a really, really beautiful line. Bishop h3. Oh, this queen one we didn't see. Yeah. Uh, queen h5. Okay. And I'm going here. Okay. And he has to play g5. And here, king g7. Minimum take. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also for attack. So he has to go uh, queen h8. Maybe he missed bishop c2. Yeah. Well, when he chose the queen move, yeah. Yeah. Because I, I'm sure if he'd seen this position, he yeah. would have probably play queen f5. Yeah, yeah, because this is losing. So when we got to this position, I remember the game I played with Vallejo some years ago. Uh -huh. And it was very similar, but from a Sicilian. And his, he also played to me queen h7, queen h8, and he was mm -hmm. completely lost. But then he offered the draw, and I said yes, and that was a disaster. Mm -hmm. It wasn't so clear as here. But mm -hmm. so he, had, he had two extra pawns. But it's queen and h8, and and the, and he told me I, you can't play chess with a queen and h8. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. And here it's wonderful. You have so many different combinations in this position. It was yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Actually, I I want to show you some really tricky lines in some nice, moments. Nice, nice. Yeah. For example, here I was thinking rook d8 for him. Okay. Uh, and I'm not sure, but I think that in some moments I have something like check, uh, check, here, check, check, check first. Okay, if he takes, queen takes. So here, and um, for example, knight g6, I think that is maybe funny, but I don't remember if he's exactly here. And if he takes, queen e6, yeah, exactly. Oh, nice, and bishop c6 makes, nice, 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 nice. Yeah, if he goes here, uh, trap the queen. Nice, 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 nice. So nice. this is losing for him. I was thinking here, uh, g6, he plays uh, g5, but g6, um, here, of course, I have at least queen f4. Of course, of course. Um, just winning. But I was thinking some line like this, bishop b3, because I, I threat g6, okay. king g7, and here uh, knight takes, yep. it's really beautiful, because if he takes queen d7, yep. but here he has h5, h5, and if I go here, then <coughs> he can take, and I don't know, it's, uh, yeah, this it's is a mess. unclear, yeah, probably I'm winning, <laughs> but unclear, so here I decide to go just uh, queen f4, very sensible, very sensible, yeah, yeah so simple. Uh, but it was really funny for me because here <laughs> I started to calculate and I say to me, here he has it, I had to mate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I didn't I didn't see. But how. if you can't see it, there might be a way here as well, but yeah. you have to see it. Yeah, exactly. You have to see it. I have to see it. And if not, you're just messing up. So no, mm. Queen takes F4 is good because yeah, you simple. eliminate the pawn and get access to F6 as well, so it's good. Mm -hmm. He decided to play to go uh she fight. Then I play queen of five. That's a very good move. This yeah. is a very good move. Ah, okay. Very, two exclamations, very good move. <laughs> because knight of six is Not strong. so easy. It's simple and strong. Yeah, because I, I was... I think that knight of five must be winning too. Because h4 is coming, uh, knight g5 is coming. But I don't know. So um, I think that this is here. Yeah, if I, if I take, then he can take. Yeah. Queen takes, pawn takes. Uh, here in Queen G7 and, and he stopped you for the moment. Yeah, yeah, probably I'm winning, but I, I'm not sure. And also H4 should be winning, but mm -hmm. okay. So finally, I understood that this is completely winning. Here, check. Here, check. I was forced. And um, here I play Queen D5 because yep. yeah, I'm doing Knight G6 and this Knight is hanging. So I, I didn't see Knight E4 to be honest. I I thought that he has to take here Queen takes, but the Rook is hanging. And uh, for example, rook b8, I have rook e7. Yes, for this, this variation we saw. This is a sort of zugzwang. You just bring the other rook in yeah. and sacrifice on e6 and game over. Exactly, it's yeah. game over. So, uh, yeah, we saw this one. But there was another position with a mate on e7. Let's see if we can find it. Uh, there were some positions where after capturing the knight, you can sacrifice your queen and with the knight on f5, give him mate on f7. But uh, if he plays badly, if he plays badly. Uh, yeah. uh, okay. So there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a huge amount of. There was a variation with knight to b4. Did you see knight to b4? So where is the mouse? Yeah, um, click click here, down here, go back. But I'm going to there and... Oh, uh, no, you go through, it's, it's a bit ah. weird. Here. Ah, okay. Yes. Do, do it here, yeah. Knight to b4. Oh, okay. This was uh, the, the, the line. But I think it's similar if you capture to queen takes d4. It's the same sort of position. Mm. And there, was some, there's, there were some other moves here as well. Sometimes I have some tricks like this. Oh. Yeah, it's really, really beautiful. Oh. I'm not. I don't know if it's working right now. But if oh. he takes with rook, I uh, have check. Check rook here. Bishop b3. Check. Ooh. Here, uh, rook e7. <laughs> rook f7. Wow. Rook takes. 
Yeah, but if he you takes have to make here, sure you have to make sure it yeah, works. Of course. <laughs> if he takes here, I have bishop b3, but okay, bishop e6, and probably rook takes. Probably winning, but who knows? No? Yeah, but they have to calculate. Also. Yeah, yeah. Minimum probably bishop b6 also. Also, there better. was a way of winning with knight to g6, but just I think it was just uh, here he played knight takes d4, yeah? yeah? Exactly. Knight takes d4, you had knight to g6. Yeah, I saw this, but then he takes, it takes, right? Or or where? Or, or, no, now you take, exactly, you take. Uh -huh, and takes, now, uh, I don't know, here, I suppose. But here, the computer was finding all sorts of. I mean, I can't he, remember which move it was. I think it was coming back with the knight. I think about rook takes, it's winning because. It also, takes also. Here. Yeah, but I saw that uh, the line that I choose is probably. But made. It's, it's an alternative. Uh, uh, this is good, and your line is fantastic uh, as well, okay. so. Yeah. Uh, I was uh, like, I felt in love with one variant here, and I wanted to play it. That okay. is Queen F2, King H1. Yep. And if he plays Bishop H3, yep. I mean to try something here, here, I don't know. Yep. Try, try something, right? Uh, <clears throat> I think that the line is Bishop H7. Oh. So he has to take because here Queen F6. Queen F6. Queen G6. Oh. One take, only move, rook e7. Oh. If he goes here, rook g7 and mate, and if he here. Oh, goes, this so is lovely. He has to play here, takes, only move, check, check, here, check, check. only move, check, and rook g8. Wow. <laughs> I wanted you to saw this one? Yeah, uh, yeah. Wow. And I wanted wow. to play, but finally he chose the other, wow. other but line. This was a very plausible line. Yeah. Wow. If, if you do this. This is probably the, your best game ever. I mean, <laughs> it's very difficult to, to improve <laughs> the game of the tournament for sure. Yeah, it's, wow. a, it's a really beautiful wow, combination. Wow, that's really nice. I, really I wanted nice. to do it, but okay, he decided. I'll post this on Twitter afterwards. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, uh, lovely, very I nice. I mean, uh, probably, I, I don't know what the computer says here after bishop a3. I mean, probably queen h4. Put game here. Yeah, yeah, queen, yeah, 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 exactly. yeah. queen h6 probably is made <coughs> in. In less move, yeah, but but, but you the other one is beautiful course, course. and it's fourth. Of course, of course, of course. <laughs> so I yeah, it's here. It's the second line, made it eight. Yeah, so so I was. Oh, right. yeah. nice, 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 yeah, nice, yeah. nice. So very nice. I wanted to do something like that, but he played bishop d4 here. I played queen e4 and he's winning. The other line that I saw is winning is queen h6 because it's made here, queen c2. Uh, so takes here with check, king h8. Uh, I say I think, and here or it's kind of the same and here. Yeah. Uh, and it's made here, he has to take, queen takes, and rookie 5. Good no, no, yeah, that, that is winning. But the queen e4 really nice, is, really nice. is forced also. Uh, f5 only move, because if he goes to rook d8, queen e8, and exactly. also mate. Yeah. Uh, so finally f5, and uh, bishop b3, I think he, he resigned here, because if he goes here, queen e7, and then a6, and if he goes here, a6, here, check, it's forced. Here, 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 mate. I mean, uh, I have a lot of. I mean, this is this is unbelievable. This is <laughs> spectacular, Thomas. A really nice game. Uh, a couple of questions for the the players in the chat. First of all, Harry asks, uh, "Great tournament so far as well. What would you say was your favorite move of the game you've played today? Your favorite move, the what one you enjoyed it? most. Uh, today's game. Probably could have five. Queen of five. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Knight four. He has to go with the queen. And these variations also. I mean, yeah, these variations are lovely. Yeah, exactly. So someone, Domaraju asks, uh, you can answer if, no, if you want to, of yeah, course. Yeah, Please ask Thomas what he thinks about changing flags like Pichot. Yeah, I support him. He's my friend. Um, I think that he felt uncomfortable with the Argentinian Federation Correct. and all the problems that they had two years ago mm -hmm. and more True. and. Uh, I'm not against <coughs> no one, I mean, but uh, if he, I mean, I'm the kind of person that thinks that if you don't feel well um, somewhere, you have to you you make, a change. Yeah. You make a change. It's okay. But Tomas, you've been living in Barcelona for many years already. Yeah. Have you considered, have you thought, are you thinking about swapping to the Spanish flag or are you comfortable as you are? I didn't think yet, but I, I'm not close mm -hmm. to... Have you have you requested Spanish nationality or you uh, residence first? Oh, well, yeah, well, exactly. same as me. So we're both in the same in the same boat. You enjoy living in Barcelona, I suppose. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Okay. I really like. I, I'm living more than five years here. So. Yeah. so guys, you should follow Tomas on social media. He's on Twitter, but a lot of Instagram. Uh, Instagram, yeah, more Instagram. Instagram, and now YouTube, YouTube, and now YouTube as well. Yeah. And you can see him interviewing players. You can see him uh, playing chess with these small videos yeah. with the tricks and traps of Tomas. 
very good. Also other things, he does improv uh, theater, he's also into uh, physical uh, gymna gymnastics yeah, and stuff. Yeah, I'm So, <laughs> and as you can see, a very strong player. And uh, Thomas, it's been a pleasure. Thank, Thank you for coming along. Good luck in the afternoon. Thank you. See you later. See you. Okay, uh, Thomas Sosa, do you see how he plays? I mean, unbelievable game, very nice game. We'll clip this one and keep it for an individual video because He's better. I played him myself. We played uh, four or five years ago in the league. He was already 2,500. I was black. I was able to hold him to a draw, but it was a more closed position, more a maneuver. And now I understand that I made a good decision playing the French against him because, I mean, in open positions, he's unbelievably strong. Uh, one other thing I would like to, re to re remark is that he said that before the game, he saw that his opponent played all types of positions, all types of openings. So he decided not to prepare. It's a very intelligent decision. I've done that myself as well. If your opponent plays the Sicilian, the French, the Karokan, you don't know which one he's going to do. And you can spend a lot of energy trying to, uh, trying to go over all the different variations. Sometimes it's better just to relax, rest, and go with a clean mindset to the game and allow your opponent to choose which line he thinks he can beat you with. And sometimes he'll fall into your own opening preparation, as happened today. So, well done, Tomas. Very, very nice game, very nice game. And I think it's a good moment to take our second mini break and then come back to finish off the, the round. So we'll be back very soon.
and we're back let me see if I got my glasses here we're back for the final part of the event I was just in the in the um, in the other broadcast with uh, Divis the Spanish broadcast saying hello to all his fans and then some of my fans as well who are following the broadcast over on the other channel in, in Spanish and uh, yeah uh, he was having fun we were looking at a couple of other games which weren't going very well for the Spanish players and uh, okay we saw Tomas's game that was absolutely unbelievable and um, and it's been a good uh, a good a good one very good one so let's see the commentary the manager there's a player Lance Henderson who changed to Andorra to get invitations not exactly so the manager it's always you have to be careful to make sure you you have the facts right because if not we could be making mistakes uh, Lance's family left uh, Spain to live in Andorra for personal family decisions and that's why he uh, changed federations not because of chess but because of uh, because of a family a parents decisions so <clears throat> that's the reason he he changed to to Andorra other players change because of different motives there's never one reason mostly you change federation because you go to live in the new country <clears throat> for family reasons or for personal reasons maybe a girlfriend maybe a wife maybe your parents change their, their house and you go with them very occasionally you change countries because of a because of other reasons it, it happens sometimes but very rarely for instance now we have several russian players living in spain but that is basically because of the situation of the war with ukraine that they transferred to to spain mostly when you see a, ch a player change federations and you ask around you'll find out there was family reasons okay war madame's gamer seems to be changed we'll check that one out um, but Kostinik plays for the Swiss flag, but maybe you don't know that she was married to uh, a Swiss national many years back. So she has a Swiss passport. Uh, that's why, although she lives in France, it's one of the reasons she plays for Switzerland. So there are always family reasons behind many of these decisions. Okay, so let's check uh, Warman Am's game. <clears throat> let's go and see if we can find it. Oh, he seems to have a good position here. Okay. We left the game here after rook to d7. Queen e3. <clears throat> Trying to get into the end game. But rook e1, good move. Take. Okay, so if you exchange rooks, then the end game is very good. The rook is misplaced here on h5. The f the b7 pawn could fall very easily. This would be a very good end game for War Madame. You play opponent play passively. <coughs> rook e3, g5, rook d3. According to the computer, a mistake. Computer prefers a simple move like g3, protecting against the jump on f4. But it does look like a reasonable way anyway. And now we're in an ending, and the opponent can play knight to f4. This would be the, the main move, and this would be the variation. King to f7, check. King to e6, take on b7, and black will take on g2. King f3, double attack, only move to c2. This is the variation that, for sure, War Minam is calculating right now. I'm sure he's probably calculating this variation now. So we capture the pawn. He might capture this pawn here. And now it's a race. Which pawns are better? The pawns on the king's side with the king a bit slightly trapped. Moves like this like this or the pawns on the queen side i'd probably take my bet with the pawns on the queen side 
But remember, when you have a majority of pawns, only one pawn can move forward at a time. So, for example, two against one, if you want to move the two, they take the double time, then the other one moving one. So this is something to, to, to be wary about. However, there's a certain strategy um, idea which is valid even today. The bishop, when we place this bishop on b6, it will help advance the pawn, the a pawn, and also will help control the impact of the advance of the opponent's pawns. So bishop against knight with mobile pawns on both sides generally is working much better for the bishop. And these these strategy ideas, they've been valid for many, many years and they normally don't change. You can see some changes in in openings in middle games, but normally in the end games, the theory of end games hasn't changed much uh, during the years. Azul Ito. Me alegro de que te guste mi, mi inglés. Esta semana retransmitimos Menorca en inglés. Pero si quieres ver español, Divis lo está haciendo en su canal. Helping my followers go to the Spanish channel if they want to follow the Spanish channel. Okay, so. This will probably be a, a win for War Merdam. Not totally sure, but likely a win. <clears throat> okay. Ah! That's real. Oh, Coca Cola! <laughs> Are you joining us, Miguel? Yes. Sure. Oh, great, great. Hey. <coughs> Just in time. So oh, I started okay. to look at some of the other games. Yeah, well. I was in uh, Cisabella, we were checking the playing hall for Saturday. Yeah. How's it looking? Yeah, it's fantastic. Looking it's good? beautiful, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing, yeah. But like, we can talk about that later. Now the games are in uh, full swing. Did you see Thomas Sosa? He came and showed his game. He won, huh? He came to look, here. Look, look at what, Excellent. one variation he showed. He, he looked very happy. Just look at this. He, I, I think, didn't I, see his game. I think he the, played the, his best game of all his life. Oh, yes. Yeah, look at, really? this, look at this variation he showed, which could have happened. He was hoping for this variation. He was hoping for this. Okay. And he was going to do check. Oh. Check. Oh, so beautiful, <laughs> man. Fantastic. Check. Check. Uh, check. 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 And wait. Oh my God, so beautiful. And there was some other very nice variations. Uh -huh. This is the one he was hoping to be able to... Yeah, he, so. would, he could win the beauty <coughs> prize. Huh? This would be ah, the by the way, best combination uh, of the year. The organizers, they confirmed that uh, there is a beauty prize. Oh, so, yeah. Well, then, then, then this, it, yeah. this is a good contender then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we, of course, we have to decide? Probably, yes, yes. Okay. You are Divis and me, yeah. <coughs> okay, this is definitely a contender, but yeah. we have to wait to see which games come forward, no? Mm -hmm. So we have some news, Faustino okay. did a draw, you know, probably. Okay. Faustino Oro, he did a draw. He's not on broadcast, so I didn't know. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, very solid game. Okay, he was playing white, some French defense. And so far, he, he's done draw with three players of 2,500. Yes, and he yes. Won uh, first so, game, so he's uh, two and a half out of four. He's in a uh, good, good, good score for the moment. Doing, doing well, I think so. Doing yeah. very well. And our friend, uh, for, former coach of football club Barcelona, Kike Setien. What did Kike do? He's, uh, I think he's better. You know, uh, in an end game, two rooks, uh, nine <coughs> bishop and five pawns okay. each, and he has a bad position. He looks very confident. Come on, his Kike. opponent, his opponent has seven minutes. He's twenty minutes. Okay. So uh, looking good. He has good chances. Okay. Yeah, today, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. So, what do you think of the first board then? This is um, yeah. Sebastian. It looked to go to a draw, but then, as you see, all the pieces are on the board. Yeah, I think Black got some edge at one point after the opening. It was yeah. not so easy for, for White <clears throat> to fully equalize. And as far as I see, Black still keeping some little initiative, no? I am not sure uh, if this is going to be enough to claim a win, but uh, definitely he's better. I mean, also he has more time yep. on the clock. And uh, for white, uh, it's a big problem to pony too. I mean, it's uh, very weak. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but at this moment, I mean, black has a little, I mean, he's a bit uncomfortable with this ping 
on the B3 G8 diagonal. Yeah, yeah. But if you yeah. would be able to solve this and uh, establish a, an outpost on E3, he's going to be much better. I mean, uh, well, I mean, it's not okay. The critical line would be Rook D7. There's one move. Yeah. One more move. Yeah. Rook C1. Ah, Rook C1. Yeah, because at that moment, if Rook D7, Rook takes Rook D1. Then queen e2, rook d7, queen f1 mate. Yes. That was a very important yes. line. Yes. So white could not uh, so trade he, rooks. He could trade was, rooks, yeah. Yeah, this was a problem. And probably he... Okay, this was played already. This was played, yeah, yeah. and this is, the, this is the current position. Okay. And of course, many pieces on the board still. Yeah. Queen's on the board, and only five minutes against ten. This is dangerous. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think Alex Diego is a big favorite now in this game. I mean... He has more time, he has more rating, he has the initiative. A mistake could happen at any moment now. Yeah, and uh, what does the machine say? Machine says equal, equal, equal. But, but of course, as long as you play the best moves. Yeah, 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 yeah. but it's um, easier to play with black, I, I have the feeling, yeah. I mean, white needs to do something before, let's say black plays king f7, knight e3, and then, okay, suddenly black is slightly better. I mean, king f7, knight e3, it, trade queen. Sorry. Yeah, it's okay. So if we get to this position, yeah, and then okay, we can okay, let's jump. let's just show some danger. Let's say a three, king f seven. Let's say whatever, king g two. Not not king g two precisely. Let's say king g one. Just a, a, to give an idea of of sequences. This type of position. Yeah, this end game. I think it's here. We already dangerous. see that the back is better. Yeah. Yeah, I think <coughs> it's, uh, the knight is uh, strong on e three. And there are some mating nets, you know, with yeah. the king on, let's say, king on f2, rook f1 is yeah, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So white has to be careful. I mean, and, and it has rook, no active king. And rook g2 is mate too. There's many mates here. Yeah. yeah. And the, the black king is very <coughs> active, the white king is in a cage. So I think this is... So uh, the ending is a good for Alexenko. Yeah. And also there could be tactics and he has more time. So mm -hmm. although the position is equal, the outcome probably is better for, for him. Yeah, I think white needs to find uh, some... Some way to... This is correct, according to the computer. Uh -huh, this is correct. Okay, he came back with a rook. And now yes. Alexeyenko has to choose between repeating positions yeah. with a draw, or abandoning the the file, which may be dangerous, or playing rook c7 just to protect the the pieces. This looks... Uh, rook c7 looks very natural to me, because he's protecting the knight and the rook at the same time. There is no danger in the eighth run, so mm -hmm. I, I'm sure he will play rook c7. Rook c7, no? Yeah, that, that's Okay, sure, yeah. we'll pop back here afterwards, but let's yeah. go and see one other And what game. happened on the first games? I mean... Uh, <coughs> draw, uh, draw. This was surprising. They no draw. decisive game, no? Uh, they draw oh, yes. here. Very yeah. strange. They repeated moves. It's very strange because yeah. it looked like black was better, no? Yeah. Or uh, at least a very promising position. Maybe he was just content to have the draws today. Very strange. Day, day four, no? Was there was, there was, a, like, there was I, a repetition. I didn't like the move bishop d7, to yeah. be honest. Not and sufficiently it, aggressive. Yeah, it was very, very passive, you know. Mm. It's very interesting because can you go back just a few moves here? It's very funny. Just I will show you one idea, probably you know this idea. One idea is that before, just before, one, one, uh, okay, here, uh, here, at this moment, instead of bishop c7, a very <coughs> strange idea, but very interesting is bishop b8. Okay. And then you want to play the same, let's say, if rook e1, if okay. that's not rook e1, like the same, queen d6, g3. Same idea. Yeah. And then, uh, now you can play bishop a7. Ah. Once, once the bishop is not okay. effective, once you have provoked you change, it, you change. You change the diagonal and you are ready to play d4. Yeah. This is not possible when the bishop is on c7 because after bishop b6, white always has not a4. Okay. So it's a little, it looks very so, weird. Huh? So, so the idea is if you think that against queen d6, white would play g3, yeah. possibly bishop b8. If you're sure you're going to you're provoke sure. g3, yeah. Then it's uh, very, quite interesting to put the bishop on b8 to come. Yeah, that's like in, in the Bobbidic attack in the Karakan, they play b uh, uh, bishop d3, and then yeah, bishop, bishop b1, one, and bishop a2. Yeah, it's, it's exactly it's the same. The same idea. Yeah. Nice, it's very idea. nice. Yeah. Okay, so let's check some other mm -hmm. games, decisive games on the top okay, board. So no? this one here, this is important, because uh, according, to the, according to the computer, now black seems to be winning. Oh, uh, black against Lube here. Aha, he's a pawn down, but Rook D1 is coming. Th this is the threat. And seems to be very strong. Yeah, if Queen C2, probably it's mating four moves, no? Rook D1, you can make the. And you, mate, and you mate here at the end, yeah. Yeah, let's go. Let's show it. Check. And very important, Queen H5 check. Yeah. Then well, where's the mate? Uh, oh, you, you. 
Well, not so easy. Bishop to come into this. Did I miss no? something here? It must be this. No, bishop d6 check, I think. We force f4. And then queen, and queen then h4, h4 check. Yeah. check. And uh, I don't know here, but... Uh, There's a couple like of mates. G4 is suggested. G4. Not so easy to find a far, but you'll find it. Yeah, queen because king e2 mate or mate. Queen e1 yeah. mate. Ah, queen h7. Yeah. Ah, this is not But so he will good. find it when they get to This here. is not so easy. You just carry on playing and yeah. then you see, how do I mean? Ah, okay, this, this is the way. Check, check, check. You yeah. don't need to see it at the start because... Yeah, I mean, you're right. You're, you're, you'll find it somehow. Yeah, so find queen c2 is losing, but what can white do? What to do to... to, to, to not queen, queen c2. Queen. I mean, this is... Uh, Rook c8, rook d1. King h2, but then queen h5 check, and it's the, and rook it's d1. The same, it's and the rook same. d1 check. No, so he's completely lost. He's lost. What was the last move? Uh, did he make a blunder or what? Ah, okay, okay. Wait, wait, okay. wait a second. So, oh, he was rook much better. Yeah, he, he was, was a pawn up. Wow. He collapsed in a few moves. This I is mean. okay. This is a bad, mistake, but, yeah. but not losing. Yeah, but the worst was rook c3. This was a complete nonsense. I mean, he had to play rook c3 and then oh, he had to provoke. One move, it's yeah. very strange. One move with 20 minutes on the clock. But queen c4 wow. check. Wow. Queen c4 check, you're playing an endgame with pawn up. Wow. What, what Why not miss. queen c4 check? What a miss. My god. Nicolas Lube, he got completely mad with, with, with rook c3. With 20 minutes on the clock. Yeah, but I don't really get what is the idea behind rook c3. I Maybe mean, to sacrifice and. Mate, but what? what? Why would no, you I do mean, that? But if queen d1 check, then okay, you are going to play the end game. Come on, play queen c4. Queen c4. And queen you play c4. the end game. I mean, yeah, it's uh, unbelievable. It's yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. And, 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 and he got knocked It's like suicide, one. you know, complete harakiri. How much? How long did he take to play this move? No, it's amazing. I mean, he's not going to be able to eat today. Rook c3, 30 seconds. Immediately. No, it's incredible. Wow. I mean. I, I don't ah, know really. okay, so he spent six minutes before to, to play, play this. Maybe he thought, okay, queen c1 and against queen d3, rook c3. And he played it fast and he ate it. Yeah, so but uh, it's, wow. it's incredible because the rook is not very well placed on c3. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't see the point of rook c3 even if queen d7 or queen d5. I mean, what is this rook c3? What is for? Makes no sense at all. No, it's incredible. Okay. A blunder. Blunder. What's the yeah, big blunder, blunder. sometimes. People collapse <coughs> for some reason. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Arjun won? Somebody telling that Nihal made a mistake. Uh, can we have a look at the yeah, game of Just Chelsea? let me see quickly here what happened. Arjun played a mating attack. Oh, nice. Nice, nice, nice. So it was take, mm -hmm. check, check. Ah, okay. If With take 96. 96. Yeah. A 96 in anyway, equal, yes. beautiful, Rook is coming. Aha, uh -huh. white is attacking with uh, all his four pieces. And black, <coughs> you can see the Rook on B7, <coughs> it's a losing, co I mean, lost take, coordination. check. No, no, no take knight G5. Take the queen straight away, yeah, this is a disaster. No, he played queen C1 <coughs> check, which is uh, probably the only move. And now take, trying to, but maybe now it's going to be checkmate, no? Yeah. He's thinking here. This here. Is, no, this is making one move, g4. g4, goodbye. Yeah. Yeah. And if king h7, let's have a look at king h7. Then we have uh, rook g7, check, and queen takes h4. And this queen looks, takes h4, yes. This yes. looks like, ah, okay, queen takes h4, he takes pawn knight, takes no? h6. Yeah. So how to, how to win here? No, 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 ah, no queen no, of no, six, no. maybe. No, no, you, you're winning because it's, oh, yeah. No, but queen of six, ah, uh, okay. No, this, this we, we have six rook, six rook. No, no, no. No, I mean before, instead of queen takes h4. But this would be okay as well because uh, rook takes rook. Ah, yeah. And this, this would be winning this as well. Completely winning. Yeah. yeah, you're right. So he has several ways yeah. of winning. No, I was thinking here queen f6, maybe also not bad. Oh. Uh, Ooh, maybe, nice. Maybe it's also good, no? Because if knight e4, then rook g8 check and queen g7 maybe. Ah, oh, this is winning as well. If knight f3 check, then you, you queen takes f3 and then. Oh, 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 or even oh. take with the pawn, I think, yeah, and then, and then king g3. Okay, so he's gonna win. Uh, the guys is going to come back to the top. So we had a situation in Nihal's game, yeah? Nihal's, yeah. Somebody said in the chat. Move 34. Let's have a look. Here. He is two and a half at this moment. Okay, so let's. Progress to here. Yeah, this is the, uh, this is the current position. position yeah. Current position, okay. <coughs> so it's uh, one piece for three pawns. Mm. No, knight for three pawns. Let me show you something in this game. Something very weird. Look. In but this block is better here. Right? But, 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 but just look at this for the moment. Look. Yeah. A very weird thing happened here. In this position, 
Yeah. The knight can go back to f6 at any moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because white has just played this that and this, true. and he's trying to push the knight back. Uh -huh. So Nihal played take. Okay. And now the knight is trapped. Yeah. But he doesn't care. Voluntarily. Yeah. But now look at this. He gives up the knight. Ah, it's so nice. And now look at what the computer says. He sacrificed here and then picked up two pawns for the piece. Uh huh. Okay. But the computer says that the best move is to sacrifice here. That is strange. Um, now it changes. But he was suggesting this. Okay, I mean, there is some compensation, but white is better here, no? But, but the moves that the computer suggests sometimes are so up yeah, to the yeah, yeah, yeah. But No, the computer needs some time also to, to find out what are the best moves. I don't know why he went for this. I mean, there was no need. Yeah, well, I mean, he's playing for a win, and finally he's going to win, so maybe... Well, it's a well, but it was risky. It was, yes, of course. How did he play here? How was the game? The game take continued take, like this. Four, take, take, queen d2. Okay. He has a nice compensation. He has compensation, yeah. Yeah, two pawns uh, and two bishops for uh, knights. Yeah, strong attacking chances. Yeah. And the a3 pawn, if it falls, then... Yeah. So he saw a sustained attack. Uh-huh. Ooh, what's happening here? Okay. Okay, it looks like... A now, a lot of pawns. Yeah. Three pawns for the, for the piece. And, yeah. and the massive pawns. This is very good for black. Yeah, rookie two seems to be a mistake. Probably white... Made, yeah, white played very badly. Yeah, difficult to play this position yeah, anyway. Yeah, yeah. No, I think it was something like knight g3 e2 was necessary. I mean, at one point here knight g3. Yeah. It's only move. Uh, ah, yeah. computer says knight g3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so my intuition yeah. working. We have we have to get this knight out. Yeah, knight e2 and rook h1. I mean, you need to get rid of these black pieces. Exchange which are a couple so of pieces, right. but but black is fine. No, because black is it's slightly it's better. Three pawns, but that's the way to go. White didn't find a way to organize his yeah. army and uh, now he's completely lost. I mean, it's a total domination if you go to final position. Black is uh, pissed down, but uh, it's total domination. White pieces can, can barely move. I mean, the bishop on f4 is uh, controlling the knight on f1. The bishop on g2 is terrible. I mean, yeah. it has no moves. And also the rooks are very poorly placed. Black can play e5, e4 any moment. This distribution yeah, is so uh, ugly. Just yeah. one bishop controlling practically All four pieces. pieces. Yeah, 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 it's amazing. It's unbelievable. It's amazing. No, e5, e4 is coming and I yeah. think this is uh, going to be game over very Fantastic short. game by Sally. Yeah, good. Fantastic good game. game. Yeah, yeah. Taking some risk. Taking a lot of risk. Yeah. Uh, he only sees the piece for two pawns in the attack. But we both know that this, this is dangerous. But yeah, if you want to win, go two ways, yeah. you, you have to risk. Okay. Uh, in the Spanish audience, we, we were a bit sad because Pepe Cuenca lost today yep. Yep. versus Juan Forest. And then I'm going to check Kike Setien, if you don't mind, Pepe, okay. because okay. I think he's going to finish. See you later. Game. See you later. Uh, later we'll have uh, this afternoon more chess. Okay? Thanks for the coke. Thank you so much. Bye. Okay, Miguel Yescas again giving us his take on some of the interesting games. Okay, so um, let's try and find let's try and find some interesting game. Which is left, not many games left already. The round is wrapping up. But I'm going to try and find some cool games for you guys. For example, let's see here, some interesting ending. Uh, Bradbury. I'm not sure if Bradbury is on a board of... Oh yes, we can check Bradbury because he's on the board of one of the streamers, of Zachary Sane. Okay, Neil Bradbury, international master from England, 2206, probably a veteran like myself with our rating going down because to get to international master, as you all know, you have to cross 2400, which is quite, quite difficult. Okay, so Zachary is one of the streamers uh, lower rated players but with big audiences as a popular uh, content creator so let's see what's happening here um so white has white has rook knights and queen and black has two rooks and two bishops so that would make the queen against the rook and the bishop okay but this i can tell you from my own experience the computer will say the white is winning and objectively that means he is 
but it's never easy to break down fortresses with queen against rook and two bishops. Never easy. Rook, uh, queen plus knight against rook and two bishops. If the position is solid, not so easy to win. So I would say that although the computer is winning, this position could still go either way. Either way. I wouldn't be surprised at all if uh, at some point, for example, now black has bishop to e5. If you play bishop to e5 here, look, he just played it. Look at that bishop on e5. Protecting the weakness, now you can't get f f4 in. So now white should actually think of moving the queen away and trying to go knight to g4 and, 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 and knock off this bishop. This could go either way still, either way. Either way, that's my human perspective as an international master. Uh, because so sometimes I know more than well that you can't trust always the computer evaluations, uh, on, on, especially when players are low on time, because you don't even have time to find out the way to win. So this might still go either way. We'll come back and check afterwards. That's supposing he is actually playing on this board, because I see that he's also playing unbelievably on the board of Alexandra so I'm not quite sure how can he, he can be playing on both boards and he's also playing on board 87 no this is a previous rounds game yeah so okay guys you really like the rating live standards I'm used to the only rating I look at is the rating list each month. But you guys look at the ratings changing every day. But if you do that, you'll see players going up and down continuously. And it doesn't make much sense because, I mean, one day you're saying, I'll do number eight. And the next day he loses the game and now he's number 12. It doesn't make, it doesn't make much sense. It's much, I'm just used to seeing the ratings change every month. Um, even every six months is, is more. Because if not, it's just jumping up and down, up and down, up and down. Doesn't make much sense. One of the problems is the players are, the streamers are playing in a small room by themselves. And um, sometimes they change boards around. So they don't play on the board which is assigned to them, but maybe they move to the other board better lighting or they agree between themselves but that's a problem because that messes up with the with the prefixed uh, pairings of the boards for publishing so things they have to to solve by themselves okay let's go and see Salina is going to win and Pichot let's see Pichot's game okay so Pichot is here Playing white, bishop, rook and three pawns against bishop, rook and three pawns. However, the black pawns are more dangerous, more dangerous than the white pawns. Yes, Niajan, but that's not correct because if you say it's the best rating achieved by the youngsters, that is not correct. Uh, it might be on live standings, but live standings are not official standings. So it's not correct that it's achieved. When they're published by FIDE, then they become uh, correct facts. If they're just published by live, that's not... At first, it's not an official website. There may be mistakes. It's not endorsed by FIDE. And second, they change every day. So it's, it's really irrelevant if someone goes up and down. Uh, the important one is every month. The, the official changes at the end of the month computed by official tournament officials with the games that's something you have to remember of course you have the hype uh, day in day out the changes of the ratings but officially you can't say this is the highest rating achieved because they're in between tournaments yeah it's fun of course I, I understand perfectly it's cool to see players going up and down huh? but just imagine that he wins the day and someone officially says he's the best Indian ever by rating, but then tomorrow he loses, and again he loses it. At the end of the tournament, he loses rating and he's gone down. So it's not official, okay? So the thing is, will Pichot hold this end game? Will he be able to hold this end game? Because the pawn on e3 is very dangerous. 
the king's coming in. I'm not sure. If, if black can connect these two pawns, this could be tremendously dangerous. Now he's attacking the pawn on a4. Yeah, Pichot has an extra eight minutes. My favorite game of the tournament so far, I, I really like the game today of uh, Tomas. Also, I enjoyed the game of Van Forest in the second round. Very nice, short attacking game. You can check that one out. The second round Van Forest game. I would say for the moment, those have been my two favorite games. But today's Tomas Sosa game is unbelievable. Full of tactics. Very nicely played. Okay, we'll come back to this one in a second. I prefer to see some other games. If I can... Let's check Alexenko. How, how is he doing? Okay, I'm not sure if he's improved or worsened his position because... Okay, now there's a, a draw. There's a sequence of a draw. This would be a draw. So if Alexenko wants a draw, he can force it now. But I have the feeling that Alexenko is not the type of player who will acquiesce to a draw here. He wants to win this game. So if he wants to win, he either has to get his king out of the way or play g5 to block the rook. If he plays g5, it's a risk. But you can't play h4 because of queen h3, mate. This would be a huge blunder. So we can play g5. The risk is you're opening up some tactics in the long diagonal. And Alexenko is not the type of player that's going to do that. I wonder what he's going to play. Let's stay here for a moment because here both players are under one minute. So it's going to be fast and furious this end. And it's, the, it's board one as well. So I think we really have to stay here. He's going down on time, getting low. Let's see what's going to happen. Twenty five seconds, twenty four. Kirill, don't forget your clock. Play a move, please, my friend. Wow, we're watching this live. 13, 12, 11, 10. He played. But what did he play? He played G5. Wow. I just said that I didn't think he'd do this. And he does it. <clears throat> yes, I will be commentating the candidates for ICC, but only we'd, we'll be doing recaps um, at, the, uh, at every third or fourth game. And they'll be published on the YouTube channel of ICC. So just, just connect, subscribe to the YouTube channel of ICC, and I'll get the recaps in every every day. However, my will be a general recap. If you want to see daily recaps, then you can probably do do well following the, the official FIDE broadcast with Vichy Anand, or the chess.com broadcast, or the Lee Chess broadcast. There are many daily broadcasts. ICC is just doing recaps, and they... Asked me if I was interested, and as I was free, then I decided to do it. I did a, a video with the in, initial preview, and then I'll be doing recaps from, I think the first one is on Monday. So they start tonight or tomorrow, the, the candidates. Let's see, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. No, they start tomorrow. So tomorrow, Thursday. No, but today's Thursday. They start today, tonight. Today's the first game. Wow, it's already here. Really, I, I know they did the opening ceremony. I saw that on the TV. Okay, what's happening here? G5, Queen B2. Okay. Queen H7. Check. Now he has to offer the exchange of queens. If not, it will be a draw. If he goes back, it's a draw. But Alexeyenko in the first round repeated three times the same position and then changed. And won. So he might decide to repeat two or three times. No, this time he went. Okay, so now the thing is, 
He's going to be mating on h8, so he has to stop that. Wow. Is it too risky to play queen f5 and king g6? I'd be really worried in this position. He has to take the king to h5. The computer is suggesting a really difficult variation. Queen f5, check, 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 and the computer suggests this move here to fight for a win. Wow. If he finds this and plays it, that will demonstrate great courage. He played it. Alexeyenko, what a player, what a player. He's playing all the computer moves, which are very, very risky. So he's, he's clearly playing for a win here. Wow. He must have a huge amount of confidence in himself to be able to play this. A huge amount of confidence. Because, I mean, come on, with less than one minute, you're bringing your king up, up into, the, uh, into the game. That demonstrates a huge amount of confidence. Let's see what his opponent did. Check. King g6. Okay, we'll stay here because this is really interesting. <clears throat> if the queens aren't changed, then time pressure is a real issue. Check. Now he has to back, back down with the queen. Block. And then go with the king to h5. I mean, to find all these moves so fast and correct moves and risky moves, because, I mean, you could be mated at any moment, but he's controlling the situation. He wants to win. He probably thinks that the, the king on h5 is safe and that will allow him to, to do other things afterwards. So he blocked. Check. Very fast. And now is the time to play uh, queen f5. Queen f5 will be the draw. And king h5 is playing for a win. Nijan, you may be right. I'm not saying you're wrong. But I think it's very brave of Alexeyenko to, to move his king. We're seeing the moves on the computer and we know they're correct. But they don't know they're correct. They just he he just sees that his king is going up into the position with the queen and the bishop checking him. That's very dangerous. To to to, to be able to do that, you have to have huge confidence in yourself and calculate very precisely, of course. So he put the king on h5. He did the computer line. And now, what to do with white? What to do with white? Rook d1, bishop d4, h4, h3. What's the correct move? What's the correct move here? Because now the king is safe, relatively safe. And uh, black could try and organize something here. No? Try and go, go for the counterattack. So now it's actually a, a difficult moment for, for Sebastian to decide how to proceed. <clears throat> Was Alexian co candidate? Really? Oh, yes. He, he got invited to as a wild card. Yes. When, when was that? Alexeyenko candidate? Oh, I'm going to check that. I think you're right. Let me check for a moment. Yeah, the wildcard nominee for the candidates. Yes, yes. That was after... Was it Rajabov who dropped out? I think it was. And they nominated him. Yeah, that's correct. Queen b1. That wasn't one of the first moves of the computer. So, maybe a mistake. It is a mistake. Queen e6. And now the threat is queen to e, knight to e3 and rook to d1 and queen to h3. These are the threats now. Also, hitting the pawn on e2. Yeah, things are going badly now. 
Queen B1 was a mistake. So Alexenko risked, but it's going to go well for him. Queen D3, but now Knight D3 is very strong. I saw him playing yesterday the 30 minute stage of the game and he's tremendously strong at 30 seconds. I mean, he's demonstrating it here. He gets low on time, but he plays very, very precisely when he's in form. And he just came from winning a tournament in, in Alicante with eight out of nine, so he's clearly in form. So Queen D3, he'll probably get hit by knight to e3 now, attacking the queen. And that could be the beginning of the end. There's a very nice idea, putting the knight on e3, the queen on h3, and getting in rook to d1, where he can't capture because of mate. So if he gets in that idea, that would be very cool. Let's see what happens. Okay, so Spanish is just finished, but we'll stay here for a moment and probably hold on until this game is finished. I think it would be good to see how this game finishes. Ooh, this is also a very cool idea, no? It looks as though he's collapsing. Rook e1 correct. Defending the pawn and avoiding knight h3. So, Sebastian is actually, even though he has a bad position, he's defending reasonably well. But look how safe the king is on h5. Well played by Alexienko. Very well played. Yep, Bradbury defeated Zachary, so the queen prevailed over the rook and the bishops. Fantastic. And now, let's see what he's done here. Still thinking. He likes to spend his time to find the best move. Computer suggests rook to d5 here. Also, to play knight g3 and go back, but that doesn't make much sense. So, will he find rook d5? Let's see if it's that correct or not. Actually, the way to win here is to go into the ending. So we might have to stop the broadcast. We do have to go and eat because we have the round in the afternoon. Ah, so he did the maneuver with the knight and the queen. Yeah, made sense. Made a lot of sense. Yeah. <clears throat> also, the, the defensive skill of a weaker opponent is, is worse. So, yeah, this, this according to my analysis in the computer, this might have to go to an ending, so let's stay around for a couple of more moves, but we might go to the ending. This might be a blunder. Oh, that now, now there might be a tactic. Now he might be winning with knight to h3 and queen h3. So let's stay for a moment here. Knight, knight e3 is the propo proposed solution, and then queen to h3. Oh, knight g3. Okay. This one's not so good. Black has played at accuracy 94%. Wow! Wow, according to the computer, this is a blunder. Wow! Wow! Why would he do this? This can't, this can't be possible. But he, he only has a draw here. He must think he's mating. Take, check, and take with the pawn. He must think there's a mate. But there's a way out. There's a way out. If he takes with the pawn, there must be a way out. Some e4 or something like that. Wow, I'm not missing this. I'm staying now. 
I'm staying, I'm staying, I'm staying, I'm staying. If you capture with the queen, it's just a draw according to the computer. But if you capture with the pawn, he must have missed something. There's e4, and the queen defends the second rank. Wow, why would he do this? Unbelievable. A completely winning position. What, what have you done, Kirill? What have you done? He must be breaking his head now after seeing this. What were you thinking, Kirill? Of course, if he captures with the pawn, then the other player goes e4 and defends the second line, and there's no mate, and he'll lose the game. So he has to do a draw. Wow, what a blunder. Yeah, this is going to draw. This is a draw. Wow, what a blunder. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Unbelievable blunder. He has to, he has to take a draw now. He has to take a draw. Chess is very tough, very tough. But this is so unbelievable, this mistake. Unbelievable. What a, what a mistake. Yeah, this is going to draw now. Of course, Sebastian is taking his time to make sure but he can do king f2 and king f This is just a draw. There's, there's no chance of winning this because if you try and win, you're going to lose. For example, if you try to win, how could it be like, let's say he plays g4 to try and open up the, the, the rook. But now you're going to lose. Check. Check. And now you'll lose the game. So you can't try and win this. You have to acquiesce to a draw. Wow. Okay, 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 okay. So guys, this is going to be a draw. So we're going to stop the broadcast now. And we'll see each of you, if you wish, this afternoon at 5 o'clock for the, sixth, the fifth round. And if not, tomorrow afternoon. But not tomorrow morning. No round tomorrow morning. We're, this is going to be a draw now. He's going to just repeat because if not, he's going to lose. Let's stay one more moment. Yeah, yeah, he's repeating. This is a draw. Okay, guys. See you tomorrow.